Welcome along everyone to Horsebox Streams. It's episode nine and tonight we have the pretty boy of amigos in ERA, Ryan Harper. How are you doing, man? Yeah, good mate, you. Yeah. Ah, not too bad, not too bad. Um looking forward to talking to you because you're probably the only man I've ever come across to have the balls big enough to drive the M6. <laughs> you know? I've got choice though, to be fair. I don't think it's you. No, no, you don't it because you're a man. You, you didn't want to be like the others, you know. But uh, no, I'm really looking forward to speaking to you and you let something slip to me beforehand that I asked you, but we'll go on to that in a while. Um, I, I like To be honest with you, I'm really looking forward to talking to you because you're actually quite a popular figure in all the racing communities, in fairness to you. And um, you're ridiculously fast. I know you've had a bit of bad luck of late, but um, yeah. these things happen. But um, I'm just going to start straight away with the kind of esports side of it. How exactly did you get into racing, into league racing and then obviously we go forward into where you, you gather the speed from because you can't have been that quick st straight away because you're ridiculous no, no. so i kind of started um pretty simple like playstation so i think it was when was it about 18 months ago mm. maybe just less than two years ago um when i get something in my head i have to do it kind of properly so i used to kind of playstation 4 at the time um uh, maybe like play Gran Turismo. We wanted to play it a bit better, so I bought myself a wheel. So I bought a G twenty nine, dead cheap. I think it was off uh, Facebook Marketplace at the okay. time with like a, you know, like a wheel stand. Yeah. So I just kind of raced on there, you know, online in open lobbies as you do on, on, on GT Sport. And then I, I, it was about a few years ago actually when I used to play on pad, I, I got into I found a set of Corsa on like okay. another store on cheap on PlayStation. It was like seven quid or something. And I bought it, tried it on pad for literally about a couple of days, realised it was just like solid. So I didn't even bother with it. Just literally put it away for yeah, I'm not even going to try. And then I realised when I got the wheel, I thought, oh, I'll try it. I thought, this is not too bad, this. And I do quite a lot of research on stuff. So when I get into something, I like kind of research it further and like it. So I saw like ACC, like GT3, again, thought, oh, I'll try it. I bought it on, on store. Yeah. Really enjoyed it. And then I thought, you know what, I bet this kind of, like open lobbies is just like... It's, a nightmare, aren't they? I remember like going around Zolder all the time and getting just bombed off and stuff in the first corner. So I thought I'll do some research. I'm on Facebook. Um, I joined an eight, uh, a self course Facebook group, just trying to get tips really about how to get faster, what to do. And um, some guy called Mike at the time uh, put a thing on the league. So it was called EOA Edge of a Dijon League. Okay. So, all right, fair enough. Messaged him, said, brand new. Yeah, I wouldn't mind joining this, that, another. Um, so basically, just joined, joined that league, uh, like a community on, on PlayStation with these guys, and they were all literally like aliens, all mega fast. <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, I've got no chance here. So started kind of racing with them, and then it was kind of this new season starting. All right, fair enough. Um, evaluation races, like we're going to have to do this Sunday and yeah. stuff. So I joined an evaluation uh, race and, and just went from there, started getting league race. But I remember that evaluation race, it was on Spa actually. Hmm. Uh, um, and I think I was running 222s, which, considering I don't play, that's not, not too bad, really. Uh, but way off the pace, obviously, I am now. Uh, I think it was on the cusp. Like, I thought I might just get in pro, but they put me in pro am because, obviously, I'm brand new, and my race, race graph was. Oh, fair, yeah, when well, you start out, yeah. So, yeah, that's all I got into it, really. And then, literally, within what, a year, I've got a massive sim set up. PC and I've just gone balls deep in it. <laughs> but what made you go from the transition from PlayStation to PC? Because <laughs> anyone who is a console player probably won't understand that. Well, firstly, the cost is a huge jump in fairness, firstly. But then secondly, we all know now the graphics and the playability and just how much more information you can get. is It's ridiculous with the extra apps and all that. So what was it that made you decide to do that? And then... Do you want to talk us through the setup you have on your PC and rigging that and what yeah, made you choose so, them bits? Again, um, going for a PC, obviously, they speak to the guys on there and stuff, whatever they're saying, like, you know, PC is a different ballgame, they didn't have a PC. But yeah. obviously, you always start going on YouTube, don't you? You start researching, trying to get quicker, and you find like Jardier, you find like you know, Dan Suzuki, you find all these guys like, you know, Jimmy Broadbent. I never even heard of these guys before I started racing, like two years ago. And you look at them, you're thinking, that looks amazing. Yeah. Well, it's PC. I've never done PC gaming in my life. I've always been yeah. a console player, never touched it. I know absolutely nothing about PCs. So, literally, um, I've seen it all online. I thought, well, eventually, that's where I want to go to. And yeah. I spoke to my wife a little bit, like, you know, I want to get a PC. And she just bought a PlayStation 5. And I bought a PlayStation 5, literally, about, <laughs> uh, oh my God, I 
18 months ago now to transition to that. And to be fair, she's pretty good. She lets me do kind of stuff I want anyway. So I'm kind of like in the pipeline saying, I want this PC, I want this PC. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, from, I think it was last January I bought it. Um, I saw a deal online, I think it was on eBay or something like that. I asked the guys that were racing with PC, one of the guys knew like PC. So I was like, is this spec any good? Mm-hmm. <laughs> not good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, yeah, it's all right. Yeah, I'd buy it. So it was like, I think it's a Ryzen 7. Yeah. What is it? It's Three three thousand six three six hundred X or something like that. Yeah. Um, RTX thirty six seventy. I think it's sixteen gig of RAM. Uh, that's it. There we go. Um, so it's just, it's a decent like mid mid range PC. So I bought that. But in terms of my gear before that, I actually had G twenty nine. And then obviously again, you research as soon as you research, it's like an open board. Yeah. Thousands and thousands of pounds. You're like, oh my yeah. god be amazing and then i thought the next step up i thought of fanatec as soon as you start in the sim racing world you hear fanatec don't you be all fanatec's the next 100 oh, percent. didn't even know about any other other gear so i kind of like thought it's a lot of money that to, to buy at the time i think it was like csle the csw weren't it i think it were and then the db1 weren't it and i thought yeah. i'm not spending like 1500 quid on a, on a wheelbase yeah <laughs> so I uh, I just I always go on like Facebook Marketplace, man, look at like second hand deals, and I found a guy selling CSL Lee with low cell pedals in Derby. Now I live in Manchester, it's two hours away. And I said to him, I said, I've seen this, he's selling it for 600 quid, I think it was at the time. I thought, great. I drove down to Derby, and I thought, what night? I think it was like Thursday night or something. I picked up this wheelbase and stuff and brought it back. So I started playing on that. I bought a place he challenged second hand for a guy nice. down the corner as well for about 100 quid. Strapped it to that. Um, I actually use like, um, what you call it, um, zip ties and stuff to take everything down because it won't fit. Did that, and then next meeting, you know, like my setup now, I've got um, Track Racer T160 uh, rig, and then I've got Semi Cube Sport um, wheelbase with uh, no. the CRB Ultra uh, button box with the U turn wheel. Uh, pedals wise I've got the DC sim racing pedals uh, with decent roll cells on so I've just got all that now I've got a button box I've got a VR headset when I want to use that and my screen's like a 32 inch ultra wide um, gigabyte screen that's fucking grand that is <laughs> so literally in the space of like a year and a half I've just gone full in and I've probably spent about 5k <laughs> But it's always the way. I think once you once you dabble in it and then you start researching more and more, you end up going into a loophole and you're just like, might as well just do it. If you're going to do it, do it right. You'll have it and it lasts you a long time. Look. You know. And how how was your missus when... Did you ever tell her what the full cost was? <laughs> yeah, she kind of knows, but she's pretty good with it as well. To be honest, we don't really... I don't really spend much. I mean, I don't really... Look, back in the younger days, you, know, you buy a nice design a gear. And yeah. I don't really do that anymore, to be honest. got white yeah. kids. Yeah. Uh, um, so all my expenditure, expenditure is kind of like on the hobbies and stuff and, and them. Yeah. Uh, well, I just play expensive hobbies, that's the problem. <laughs> but at least you're not pissing it against the wall going out in the beer. You'd easily spend five grand I in a few months on the beer. When I go out, yeah, I drink, but I don't, not these guys, like some of my mates go to the pub every weekend or the night. I don't, I don't really do that. I don't smoke. Hmm. So yeah, like I say, I don't really spend money on stuff like that. That's good though. You know, it is. It's a good thing because at the end of the day, you, you're you with your family, you're doing the right thing, but also, like, at least for your <laughs> wife, she knows we are when you're on that rig. <laughs> oh, no. Well, she goes to bed that early, so literally, she, one of the reasons I can get to race all the time is she goes to bed at, like, anything between 8 and 10 o'clock at night. That's she hates, she hates, like, staying up. She likes to go to bed. Well, I see it as my leisure time. Yeah. But I don't go to bed at least 12 o'clock. So I see, otherwise, she's going to work. You're getting up, you're going to work. Yeah. So I can sleep on most nights and do that. So she's pretty good with that. Nice one. That's really good. And then, so what made you, I suppose, what was the thing that made you go, though, from the PlayStation to PC? What was it that said, right, I need to go there? Was it competitive? Was it the size of leagues? What was it? Was it literally just watching Jimmy Broadbent and thinking, I'd Brilliant. like to look Honestly, at that? Just watching the guys off YouTube, seeing them all got PC, see what you can do with it. Obviously, knowing that that is the next step and, and, and like the equipment you can get. I was fascinated with, like, the steering wheels, like, the screens in it and, like, all the gear and stuff, and I thought you can't get it on PlayStation. It's restricted to that like, um, ecosystem in it. So mm. it was just everything about it is like unrestricted. You can do everything. You see, like you know, even like using that crew chief and using all these like other apps and stuff. You can open up. It's yeah. like a whole world and all that just enticed me to think you know that's that's the place to go. 
True. I'm just looking at the chats because it's on the middle of the stream there. So Stacey's in. He said he pulls up the chair. And Liam, thanks very much for subscribing as well. Uh, and then Stacey was like, any more interesting than Liam? The Liam's, oh, you're oh, already more interesting than Liam Smith, fella. Sorry. And then <laughs> Liam, he realised he wasn't a child. I think that was in regards to PlayStation, the PC move. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he said, what's the, I missed the mention of the gymmer. What a lad. What? I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is. But, um, so you got onto PC, um, what lead did you start into and how did you start developing? Obviously you got the newer tools and obviously with the tools, it's not the tools that really make the difference to the driver. As you know, it's down to getting into hard work and understanding the cars and I suppose learning the processes of understanding the physics of each game as well. So how did you evolve your own drive? And as you were saying, when you started out, you weren't exactly the cleanest spatial awareness as every new driver is. How did you evolve? Because you, honestly, you are one of the, the fastest guys there now, in fairness to you. Well, literally, like I said, when I started with the EOA boys on PlayStation, it was all literally rapid. Now, if one of the, I, I think, um, like I said, MGL races in there, if he'd come in here, honestly, he's just rapid. Uh, and he's at the pace like we're at now, if not quicker. Hmm. Uh, so it's like, I'm asking questions of what are you doing? Because obviously, when I used to race, it was literally slam the brakes on, release the brakes, turn it in. And I knew racing in lines, and I had like a basic knowledge and a bit of talent in terms of stuff. But trail braking, never heard of that in my life. Okay. Yeah, didn't have a clue what it was. Um, all the kind of te technical elements, not got the foggiest. So when people learn that, again, I'm quite analytical, me. So literally, when I see something, I have to learn everything about it, and I have to be the best at everything I do. And that's something, just my natural personality. Hmm. So. I'm researching like, how do I do that? Like, I'll try it. And like I said, on the G29, when I first had that, it was very much, all right, I need to release it slowly. Like, it was so hard to do because it's not a mold, so it's, very, it's a pedometer in it. So unless you yeah. put it down, it's, it's the, the way you feel. So I feel like I was lifting my foot up on the floor and I got used to it and stuff and it's like getting quicker. But as soon as I bought, you said about equipment, but as soon as I bought my load cells, I shot up quick, at speed by about a second, like instantly. Because you can just modulate it, you can feel yeah. it. So you have to lift the foot up, you can just release the pressure, yeah. and so it straight away. And again, when I bought my direct drive, my semi cube again, I think that kicked on again because just the responses. I think I've been my first race. I went to Silverstone on the practice. And I was going through cops and I went through uh, magazine Beckett's. I went, oh my god! Literally turned the wheel just to slide, and the car went up. That is just instant feedback. Brilliant. Again, got used to that. Got quicker again straight away. So. Yeah. I know I get people don't use equipment, they can, they can use it, but I think sometimes it does actually help in, in a way. I think it does when you have the skill and understanding. I think that's what the biggest thing is. Is I think you probably learned your craft with the G29, got as far as you could with that equipment, and then that's really what evolved you into the next level. And then when you're seeing the differences, that's probably when you delve deeper into the finer details. Um and were you one of these people then when you went to PC, were you, did you get up straight away like Chris Tedder and look at your data all the time and see where you could get faster in corners and Honestly, stuff like that? never looked at data ever until literally this week when Chris told me about chat time. Really? Never looked at data, no, because I, I just, I, I wasn't at the stage where it was kind of marginal gains or like tenths of a second. It was always very much right. I look on YouTube, go mm. like and find, you know, a goal set up or one of the fastest guys. What time are they doing? Right, great. And then what I, from the start, actually, even on PlayStation, what I used to do is just literally look, right, what's the breaking points? So I'll pause it at the point where the brake starts to come on and go, right, where, where am I looking at here? Well, mm -hmm. my breaking point, right, it's there. I'll try it. And then I'll just shoot around the car and go, my God, how are they breaking there? <laughs> um, and you get used to it. You practice, you practice, you practice, learning how to, to get the car slow down, turn in and do that. But like now, I think I'm at the stage now where I'm quick enough where I need to look at data because I can't physically see exactly what I'm doing differently. So I think mm -hmm. me and Chris looked at one the other day on uh, Mizano, I think it was. And I think I worked out it was one tenth on each corner I needed to find, which caused like 1.2 or 1.3 seconds. Wow. And that's like, oh my God, how, that's like how close it is, but how difficult it is to gain that tenth of a second on each corner is ridiculous. So 1.2 seconds seems like a hell of a lot of distance. Hmm. But when you actually analyse it, it's only a tenth or two tenths max. Yeah, well, I suppose when you break it down to every single corner, that's a massive amount of time to be gaining. But the main <laughs> thing is you can see that, but then it's getting consistent at being able to do that yeah. as well. How did you learn consistency? Because in fairness, you have been very consistent. I know the last year, the endurance is just you and Chris have had the worst look known to man. But other than that... Where did, you, where did the consistency come in? Were you spending loads well, of hours at it? Or? I'm not consistent enough because 
Um, I think you asked a question before I didn't answer it, where I said, like, when I started PC, what communities did I to kind of come mm. in? So I went, as soon as I got on PC, I was like, I know nobody. So I thought, I, I went on um, all the websites looking to find out communities. I think I found uh, my Sim GP, actually. Okay. So on top of Sim GP, you got all the leagues, haven't you? So I think the few leagues I looked at that I found that I thought, oh, are interesting, uh, was Ark at the yeah. time, which is Sim Racing. So I applied to go on there. And there's another one which is DG, GGSR, which is Dad's Goal Sim Racing. I thought that's okay. quite good because that was like Dad's, I'm a dad myself. And they race at night at like half past nine. I yeah. thought, great, fits me brilliantly. But I wanted a Sunday league because I used to race on Sunday with the PlayStation guy. So Ark was the Sunday. Yeah. And I was with there from January. I think I raced in whatever season it was. Um, and then obviously all it, all it changed and it? it went to obviously the RA and now, now we're in there actually sorry it wasn't ARC I actually started it was Grey Wolf racing they were called it started oh I heard about the Grey Wolf before with ARC yeah so yeah Grey Wolf uh, and I started in a, in a season with them and then all of a sudden it got merged into this ARC and then it got merged into obviously now the RA so mm-hmm. I saw I got racing with those and I still race with the DGSR boys on a Tuesday night because that's a Tuesday so I race in brilliant in both leagues that's um, really cool and what was Grey Wolf like? Because that's one thing I, I understood there was another league beforehand. I don't know much about it, nor will we go into the details of it. But like, was it still the same guys running it or was it other people in it? I don't, I don't know who it was running it, to be honest. Because the guys who, who were raced with in the Grey Wolf guy, I don't race anymore, a lot of them. Oh, really? Uh, so I remember some of the guys, they don't actually, especially at the top, who, who are, you know, looking at uh, winning races and stuff. No, no, I don't know what happened to him. So when it went to art, kind of all, I don't know if they set their own kind of league up or didn't want to race anymore. I'm not sure what happened. Um, but obviously I stuck in, I think like Chris, like, I don't know how long Chris has been doing it now, Chris mm-hmm. Teller, but he kind of got involved and it got quick enough to decide to join and get more involved with the community. And obviously now it's just ridiculous how <laughs> some of the guys are in there. Yeah. It's just it's really mental. Yeah, but I think you mentioned consistency before, didn't you? But honestly, I was so inconsistent. I probably still am. I think in the other league on the Tuesday, um, I was like quick all the time, but I kept on making mistakes, either being too aggressive and taking people out, not purposely, like mm. going for moves and, and kind of clipping people or, um, you know, making mistakes. And I looked at the league at the end of it, I think I finished like fourth or fifth in the mm. league on Tuesday. But my pace, my qualifying, and where I should have been. Hmm. I should have won the league. That, and also, there's penalty points. So, in that league, you get a penalty point for every kind of contact you make. And it's in, in like a system where, like, I talk about first lap, like first corner. If you make a, an error on that first corner and hit someone, you get hammered. You get so yeah. many penalty points, it's untrue. Um, I think it had something like 60 or 70 penalty points, which knocked off your system. And then I was just, I wanted to quit. And I was like, I and they said, no, no, don't quit. Carry on, you quit carry on yeah. but I thought from that I need to kind of hold it in a little bit so I think that's what helped the last few seasons is just you know not drive well say not drive because I get DTs for fun don't I but uh, <laughs> uh, you know just try and be like you say just don't go full out all the time and, and mm. like I say it's just practice end of the day yeah I think what your problem was with you and Chris in the race last time round I think well, obviously, there was the incident to start, but I think because of the race you had before that, I think he's out to try and get like a, a win and show, you know what, no, we're, we're better than what happened the race before. And I, I honestly, what I felt was that I thought he's overdrove at the start, but then he's got your head down after the incidents and he's just he's pulled the way back up, which was amazing, in fairness to both of you. Misano, the three and a half hour yeah, one. I mean, that just killed us, that endurance race, me and Chris, because what we should have done, what we planned was we needed the quality. And then him to come to the car at the start. Yeah. Uh, do two stints and I do the last stint or whatever stints are left. And I just couldn't get a quality lap in. Mm. I think I was like fifth or something. It was a one thirty three six or something like that. But I know in practice I was getting like one thirty three threes, pushing one three twos and stuff. So every time on the lap, was my delta was going up and I was I was doing all right. But I kept on either making a mistake, mm. hitting track lights, or a couple of times I don't know who it was in the front. I just got in the way or a car was in the way it just killed all my momentum yeah. so I was just fuming I was trying to get a lap in and then when it comes to the race you can't swap after it's gone and I didn't know that so as soon as quality's finished you can't swap driver no yeah so I was trying to swap driver wouldn't let, me drop, wouldn't let me swap so it from there my head had gone I had a bad day anyway and then um, in terms of the car set up Chris had all the car set up 
So I put a setup on that I thought would work. Started the race and realised that we had a brake pads well on, didn't we? Because I didn't. Oh yes, it. yes, yes, yes. So because I did that, um, it just what I didn't have the tire pressures for um, all the pit stops. Didn't have anything ready. So I had it gone and then we started. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to, I saw the wife and kids I sit and watch, but in my single with them, I think it was an ITV phone <laughs> with the kids going and watch a panda or something on, on, a, on a stage. So I said to her, I watched that at eight o'clock and I couldn't until I was doing the first thing. So it was like, oh, I'm agitated. And obviously I spam and they just fell off. And Chris is in the air going, calm down, just <laughs> keep driving. We've got three hours here. That's the so, joys of teamwork. Yeah, got me head down and just as much as I can. And then obviously it just didn't work out, didn't it? But, yeah, we're not having much luck in that. Look, I think um, I don't know whether I'd be right in saying this, but from what my experience of you, Ryan, is that you put more work into the likes of the Saturday racing and even the Monday racing. And I think last season I seen how like how fast you were, but how consistent you were, like especially at the end of the season. And I'm sure that's going to come back into it. I just think you and Chris had a, a point to prove, and unfortunately, the point wasn't shown. But the comeback was shown, like what happened in. Um, in uh, Monza as well, where he's had that yeah. kind of uh, tough start, yeah, but it came back. But both is it's it's down to both is like it's not just one driver, and like that's one thing Chris is all about. He he takes the good and the bad, and I'm sure you do as well. He's yeah, about man. well seasoned and fast racers. And how did the relationship with Chris come about as well? Obviously, uh, people that mightn't be in a racing community, they mightn't see the the friendships and the you know the banter that goes on in the background of it as well. But like, the, how did you and Chris become so close, and even the likes of Liam and that as well? All the mad banter that was happen. Um, I mean, I just like getting in the banter. I know it's just good fun. There's no point being in a community if you're not going to kind of, you know, get involved. Is but in terms of like me and Chris, I think it started when obviously we were both fairly quick and rolled up there at the time. It was like me and I can't remember the time I was in, in there, but it was like up there. What we used to do the time trials, and we always literally hammering time so we're having banter between us all you yeah. know set a faster time and you push yourself further and you set another fastest time and it just got from there and obviously when you come to do like uh, endurance races and stuff we just kind of fit in terms of we're both relatively quick yeah. similar style in terms of we both like engine cars so it kind of just fits if that makes sense so yeah kind of just happened like naturally there yeah and would you class gary smith is up there which is well i know i think he's going to be yeah, joining definitely. you for a spa but i didn't know gary because Gary was on the Amigo side. Now I never yeah. raced with the Amigo. So Chris, obviously, been doing that for a while. I didn't know. Um, and I've also obviously raced with the RA guys and obviously the R guys for a while. And then literally, it must have been, I don't know, might have been like eight months or something. Chris said, oh, you might like this, the Amigos. I was like, I can't really commit to a Monday because I race mm. on a Tuesday. Um, all my kids do stuff during the week and I race on a Sunday. Unless we race days, we're choosing a, a, a Sunday. Yeah. Um, so I said, I, I can jump in now and again. Uh, but I'll see what it is. And I think I joined one base. I went, this is just like mental. <laughs> like, it's like, the problem with me is that because I'm quite analytical, like thinking stuff, I have to, like, on a Sunday, I'm always ready for Sunday because yeah. I practice my ass off all week. Every spare time I get, I'm like, I need to set the car up. I need to get as much pace as possible. Right, I'm not on the pace. What do I need to do? Research, 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 practice, practice, practice. Yeah. I can't just turn up and race. Like, it's just not me. I can't, like, last night, I can't jump in a car that I don't know on the track that I don't know because. I don't know what I'm doing because yeah. breaking is different in different cars, you know, um, gear selection, things like that, how it feels, and, and I can't just do it, especially if it's wet. I'm like, I'm not going to set up. Yeah. I, I need a specific setup for wet racing. I can't just get in on my dry setup. It doesn't work for me. It feels too understeer. I need a, I need to set my car up properly for the wet. So when it's going wet and dry and wet, I'm just like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing. It's just mental. Yeah. So, yeah, so we're over there, then I think we did. Um, first enduro racing um with because i don't i've never done enduro racing before and i wanted to get involved with it because that's another thing why i like to come on pc because i've seen mm. all these driver swap events but all that looks absolutely class yeah so it was a i don't know what it was actually it was a accss i think it was a league i think um, chris wanted to do uh watkins then i think it was just was it a 10 hour i think it might have been a 10 hour right and he said gary you're gonna do it so that's when i first met gary really it was like jumping here so gary's really quick and he's, he's rapid he's, he's yeah. really quick yeah. uh, we did it in the Merc and we just kind of clicked and we're all fairly similar pace and we did alright I think we were top 10 I think but we should have done even better to be honest uh, we should have been well up there because yeah. the likes like Jared and people out was in that race oh wow just, oh. Uh, really really strong and um, we just all 
relatively quick and, and, and got on and just fitted the style. And I think we all drive or tend to drive uh, mid-engine cars. I think Gary likes the Audi, I yeah. don't know that yeah. McLaren, Chris is obviously Honda and things like that. So I think it just kind of fits. Yeah, no, I'd agree with that. I think um, I think the the six hour of spa with the three U's because I know Gary's coming back in for that as yeah, well. Yeah, should be back in for that. So it should be good. Hopefully, we might get a bit of luck this time. I as well. Look, yeah. at least you know now it's out your system. Yeah, I'm gonna say I'm not taking first in this time. I'm not getting. <laughs> <laughs> not getting but saying that, Chris had a nine there, didn't he? In Silverstone first lap. Yes. So yeah. Gary can start it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think you. Yeah, you've had the fair share of bad luck, and the finish on the high would be nice as well. Feels. Um, and I suppose then, like, is there any other sim racing that you do? Like, obviously, ACC is a very, very big thing with you. But is there any other kind of sims that you like racing in the likes of AMS two or anything like that? Um, I, I never really dabbled in it to be honest, because like I say, when I first started, ACC was me um one for PlayStation. Yeah. I come over to PC, and like I said, when you get in the league, it's that practice time. You need time to practice. And don't get me wrong, I downloaded all the sims. I downloaded everyone. You know, I had to do a self course. Yeah. AMS2, uh, Race Room. I kind of downloaded them all and, and, and kind of dabbled in it here and there, but never really thought of it. Mm-hmm. But I just want to choose the DJSR guys actually do races now and again in different sims. So okay. I joined the leagues in there and did a couple of ACC, but it's like short races. It might be like a three week or four week kind of stint. So okay. I've, joined, I've joined them a few times, raced different cars, but I just, it's like anything, I need to put the hours and I need to put the practice in yeah. to feel the car. Um, and if I'm doing all different leagues, I can't, I can't put the time and effort in to, to get as quick as I want, I want to get. So I do enjoy it, I like it, and it's great to see the crack. Um, but like I said, my main public sim is ACC. If there's an ACC league, and I've, I've put all my kind of effort into that rather than the other sims. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Um, you'd rather be a master of one than none, realistically. 100%. But that's the last time of my life. My dad calls me Jack of all trades. So. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell there's a, de- a bit of Del Boy in you anyway. But um, no, I think that's a very good point for anyone who's getting into it as well because it's easy to get caught up racing every single sim out there and wanting to have a dabble in them all, but you'll never ever really be winning proper fast races unless you just stick with one, which is very fair. Yeah. Um, and what made you choose ACC of all the Sims out there? What was the one thing that you liked about that compared to? Because there is, as you said, so many other Sims out there. I think it was just it was the, the one I found first on PlayStation where okay. I got the community. As soon as I got in that community kind of feel and the, and the league kind of ethos and, and feel of it, I think I just kind of stuck to it and that was it. Yeah. So when I come to PC, it was just natural to try ACC. I was always going to go into the other ones. Hmm. But I think as soon as you get in the community, you feel part of it, don't you? You feel like you just... Kind of yeah. sit like now with, with the arc the way it's gone. Yeah, well, I can't see myself leaving. I can't myself myself not driving anywhere else on a Sunday. So I think that helps massively. If you get into a group of guys who race that sim, it, you're not going to do anything else. Are you? Or you're not going to leave and you can feel any different. I think that's with me where I've gone. Really, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we'll we'll go into the whole ERA side of things for a minute as well. So obviously you've been in the here quite a while now, and you're very well known. Um, with the season coming ahead, what are your expectations? Because now, as we've had, obviously, probably we've doubled in size, literally doubled in size in the amount of drivers, and there's 106 confirmed for the for the drivers in there for the next few uh, uh, evaluation races. Who are you expecting to be fighting with realistically? You no, know, look, you're <laughs> most likely going to be up in the, the pro. Let's be honest. It's honestly, it's a toss of a coin this year. It is absolutely ridiculous the guy the guys who are racing this year. You know, I mean from, from our league from previous years, you've got the likes of Chris obviously Tedder, Nick yeah. Santis, you've got Blake Morgan who wasn't here last year, was year before who literally yeah. I mean I've been quite lucky, I won the last two, I won the last art one and I won, yeah. I won the R A league. Yeah. Blake pushed me all the all the way in the first one. And then obviously Skyler now, he's in it from last year, who's like rapid, he pushed me all the way, he probably should have won it in the last race last year. Um so you're Blake Skyler, Nick, you've got obviously Tedder. Well, then you know, you've got like Ryan Cooper's coming, you've got the likes of the South African guys with them, so you've got Chris Vickers coming in for the endurance races. Adam Locke's pulled out ridiculous pace from nowhere, which is ridiculous. Matty Gamble's getting quicker. Mm-hmm. There's like eight guys straight away, and you're not even talking about the other South African lads who are in it and the other guys we don't know. Yeah. The pro is going to be ridiculous. It's going to be so quick. It, I think you can't just say that guy's going to win it. If you make a mistake, you, you, you're not finishing in the top seven, eight, nine. 
No. So it's actually it's consistency and, and kind of. I mean, I'd love to say I'd like to win it again, but I just don't think I will this year. I think I'll get a top five up over the moon. I think there's it's, 15 Eleanor lads after coming in the likes of Stride Arm as well, which is Paul's teammate in the last it's few it's wins. It's yeah. Well. I think oh, so. God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Don't tell so, me, uh, what's his name? Anderson, Kieran's racing as well. He's in I've, no, I've no clue. I may check that out as well, but um, we won't forget about Liam Smith. Liam saying in there, don't forget about Liam Smith. Of course, he is probably yeah. number one in Stacey Ellis. Liam's all right, I can win the split to leave the barn this year. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, it's, it's going to be very, very tough this year. But in all splits, like I have to say, looking through even the pro arms and then the arms as well, like it's. Uh, they, you can't pick out who's going to win the championship. You really can't. No. Uh, and how would you feel about the calendar? It's. it's a, do you know what? You've done well to pick it, to be honest, because every track is kind of. You can't just think, oh, that car's going to choose that track. Because if I remember rightly, you've got, like, you like to say, Imola and Zolder, which are your, your curbs. So straight around, I'm thinking, I'm going to take the Ferrari. Yeah. I can't take around those tracks. But then you've got the likes of uh, Zambo, aren't you? And who's the track? Silverstone, which is kind of fast and winding. You know, you think a high downforce car would be good at, at those tracks. So yeah. It's a good choice. It's difficult to choose a car that's going to be good at them all. And have you chosen your car? I'm, I did, and then I'm, I'm changing it again. I don't know what to choose, to be honest. I'm struggling. I am struggling. A McLaren, I'd say, for you. Uh, I've done McLaren before. The McLaren, that's a safe choice, the McLaren. Do you reckon? Uh, yeah, you, you can't bin the McLaren. You very, it's, it's tough to, to bin it. It's, it's a solid car. Mm. Like, and the only problem with McLaren I struggle with sometimes is the brakes. I drove the McLaren first season um, in, in, in our car the last season. Mm. It, it was. Uh, I know I found a quick old time did all right, but I chose the Ferrari second season and I just jumped up a level again in terms of speed okay. straight away. Just uh, the brakes, I can get on the brakes a lot quicker. Mm. Yeah, it's very sketchy and it can be a very loose rear now and again the Ferrari and it can cost you if you put a loose setup on. Uh, I had a Kalami race through the year uh, in last season. I don't know if it was this league or not. And mm. um, it was rapid in it in, in, well, in random terms, but certain corners like sunset and things like that, if you get it wrong, you're gone. Right. So I don't know, I had the Honda. I had a livery so I think Justin sorted me out a livery in the Honda. I was gonna go Honda and I thought, right, I'm gonna go all in, choose the meta car, because I need to be quick and I need to be I best. love that car, I have to say. It's so good. This year, because it's like everybody's racing it. I thought, right, that's it. You know, sometimes if you can't beat him, you've got to join him, aren't you? So mm. I thought, right, get me on the I drove on Kalami on the thing we tried, I thought, oh it's great, this I really, really loved it. Yeah. I, really loved it. I loved it. But then I tried it on Mazzano the other day. And I thought, oh my god, it's a death trap. It's too sl- it's way too loose for that track. <laughs> Gary mentioned something yesterday in, in, in chat, which summed it up brilliantly. It just feels like the, the turning circle is literally millimeters. You turn yeah. a little bit on the track, the rear end just goes. Yeah. Know, it's just so fast. So you got a fast sweeping corner. You just can't get any turning angle on it. No. I, I love the car, but it will try kill you. It will try kill you every moment. So I'm a bit stuck at the minute. It's I want Take the Ferrari again to safe option, but the problem with that is it doesn't suit some of the tracks. Audi might uh, be a good track or a good car. What's that? The Audi might be good for you. Uh, I can't drive the Audi. I can't do it. Really? I'm I'm very heavy footed on the accelerator. Really, that's one of my ah, okay, okay. heavy footed. And I think that's from driving the McLaren, the Ferrari, because the McLaren you can get on the mid corner and put yeah. it to the floor. Ferrari with the TC you kind of hack, you put it on TC9 and you're not letting it go. You can just mm. put foot down. That's what I like. I try the out, it literally got modulated so easy, and mm. I spin the bit every time. What about Very Porsche? Easy. Porsche. Matthew Gamble's in there. I love the turning, but again, lift off oversteer. <laughs> you, you, you lift off the, the throttle in the fourth and you're gone. Can you know, again, a little kind of. If, if you loosen the diff though off throttle, she'll be alright. Yeah, but then you use the esports self because I'm, I'm not, honestly, yeah. this is the thing. I've got. No idea. I'll just sell cars. Honestly, I know nothing about it. Okay. And you can just get in a car and drive it. That's it. So I actually use all these paid setups. I might tweet one again. So you'd like, I think Aris has a bot for me, a setup bot that you can go in and put like, this is loose or whatever, and it tells you what to do. And I'll just tweak it a little bit. Hmm. And I'll change it here and there. And I'll, or what I tend to do in the midweek. So for example, if I've got a race on Sunday, I find a setup, I get as quick as I can in that setup, and I'll try another setup. Do the same, try another setup. 
do the same, and then I'll decide at the end of the week which setup I'm taking and whether I need to tweak or not. So sometimes I might try a setup on the Saturday or even Sunday morning if I've never tried, or tweaking one, and I'll say, right, I'll take that. And mm-hmm. sometimes it could be to my detriment because it might be too sketchy, that setup. It might be good in one lap, but the race, it's, it's, it's a nightmare. So, yeah, I've, I've no idea what to say this is now. I've been I mean, messing around with the Aston last night, actually. That's too easy for you to drive. It's too easy for you to drive. No, you can't do it. Like It is, but... I, I never drive front engine cars, I'm, I'm not mm. with it. Um, and I struggle in the exits with it a little bit because you have to kind of trail brake in, in, in a bit more. So I don't know. I'm the Bentley might suit you because if you love being on the throttle, that Bentley loves to rev as well. Uh, I know it's a big car, but like it actually is such a, it's a good car to drive. But to fair speaking to Skyler, you made a good point. I, was spotting, I mean, he's American, he said I can't drive on the right hand side. I'm, I'm a, obviously a Brit, an Englishman, driving the right hand side all the time, but it just feels alien. <laughs> it's, oh, really? It's, yeah. It's, yeah, it just feels wrong. Yeah, because it's so used to driving on the left hand side. It's weird that saying that we drive on the right hand side all the time. But there's one car we haven't mentioned. I think we showed the Jag. <laughs> no, well, at least one off races will be fine. I think we got some decent pace out of it. Not one off race at Carlisle. It's just you're not going to be competitive, and if you drive that, you're going to be nowhere. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks for the sub, man. Um, like the M4, if you drive that, I'd, I'd lose any respect for you. So I'm not even going to mention that car to you. To be fair, before the season started, that was the car I was going to choose. And like, honestly, it's such a good car, but God, it's so boring. I'll what is it? It's great. I just couldn't get any pace out of it. Really? Couldn't get any pace out of it. Carl Arm is obviously 141, 41.5, something like that. I couldn't get any pace out of it. Wow. I, well, I, could, I couldn't. I was it was Magnum 42, is it? I just couldn't get any pace out of it at all. That's crazy. So, um, no. What else is the retro? Because I seen that drove like yesterday. I'm so happy someone actually picked that car for no. a change. Would you give that a go? I said like uh, Chris was saying. Obviously, I don't know if it's Mike and it don't him that well, but yeah. I knew that's the car he drives. I, I can't believe that. <laughs> Absolutely, the man I drives that all the time. That's such no. a good car. Such a good car. Well, uh, can I put up a poll and let the viewers choose for you? Oh no, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be interesting to see what the poll it'd be interesting what that's like we'll, pu- we'll put up a poll and then I'm going to pick five cars so we'll pick the cars between us and anyone who's watching can choose and you never know it could be something that you might go with Um. so one sec I'll get this up for the guys right so pick the first car I'll pick the second you pick the third I'll pick the fourth you pick the fifth that's not funny if I say only you say Jag. <laughs> I know, I'm not going to do Jag too. No, no. Because this is for a, a serious season with fast drivers, I won't mess. Yeah. Right, so pick, you have to pick the car first and then pick them the whole way, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Well, I have down the Honda, so I'll say Honda. And a sec, yeah, well, that's it. That's a no-brainer of a car. Um, I am going to say the Porsche. Because I think you, you're putting yourself down with that one. Next one for yourself? No, Fezza Ferrari. Ferrari, yeah. There's one car we didn't talk about, which is the Lambo. So I'll go with the I Lambo. Heard it's actually the straights, though. I heard it's fa- isn't it fast and straight in those shitting corners. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I've just heard it's terrible. Even though a guy actually on the Tuesday League is actually rapid in it. Right, go on and pick the Bentley. Bentley. Just for something different for you. It is a good car. Yeah, Aston. Aston, all right. Right, so we'll put it live for... Do you want a five or ten minutes? Yeah, go for it. Seriously. Ten minutes we go. It's the poll to start there. Anyone who's oh, in... Gamble at this. Uh, yeah, Matthew, that's, that's how we pick Gamble's <laughs> car because it was down to us, the admins, to choose it. Disclaimer, the last race, this is not actually set in stone. I get final set. If it's interesting, <laughs> I think I, I think the top two you should definitely consider. I think that should be fair. But we move on from that, so... Um, with with sim racing, because you're such a big part of it and you are very fast, would you ever see yourself kind of getting into more of a league running role or would you ever like to go down that road? No, probably not, to be honest. I've just not got the time. Yeah. Uh, I've seen what people put there. I mean, put it now, you know, you got to say the guys who run the league, they're fantastic. you got to give them credit where it's due because mm. 
behind the scenes, people don't realise what actually goes on to run the league. Um, even like the cost as well, servers cost cost money. Need to be done if we don't soap and you don't ask for money and things like that. I know people uh, give donations and stuff, but it's like all the marketing and stuff. You see Chris with the you know the um, track guides and stuff, and yeah. it's just it's, it's consuming. Yeah. Um, I, I I personally I, I I can't I can't do that. I can't give up that much time with work with kids. Uh, other hobbies and stuff. I just uh, no, I can't. I can't see myself in the league. Oh, I think that's very fair. It's something I like asking everyone because you do see, like I see strengths in everyone. When I'm looking at everyone, Joe in the Discord and that, I'd be like, they'd be good at that. They'd be good at this. But um, no, I think you have a lot of good strengths. But I think it's very fair. You're in here because you want to race. You put the time to race, and the rest of the time is for your family, and that's a very very fair thing as well. You can't really mock that either. Um, and with the with the changeover with ERA, and I asked you this because you're an active member in it, is there anything you'd like to see happen that hasn't happened, or is there anything that you'd like to see implemented that isn't implemented as of yet? I don't know, to be honest, because I, I, I don't know, probably not, because I think the way it's going, it's going in the right direction. Obviously, the growth speaks for itself, doesn't it? Mm. Obviously, I don't know how long it's been with ERA now. But the growth in members and people racing is ridiculous. And mm. I think the admins at the minute are kind of set, receiving... Um, ideas and, and taking it on board so i don't think there's anything that i'd like personally to i think we mentioned little things haven't they like hmm. uh, i think skyland is like, like a history and having a track and we've mentioned all that type of stuff haven't we? yeah and i think the only thing moving forward is kind of i'll be maybe on the discord or whatever you know history of past champions or past lap times could be one as well so like yeah. i've got all the fastest laps of, of the community so you've got something to beat or something like that so Having kind of something to strive or find out what happened, maybe that's the only thing I would say uh, moving forward would, would help, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think there's there was an awful lot of really good ideas thrown in that meeting that we were all in. Um, you had some really good ideas as well. I'm, I'm going to announce one thing for you because um, yeah. it's something that you said and I, I believe in it and I was thinking about it for ages and... Chris, I had a chat with Chris Tedder about it as well. Like, I'm going to be only commentating on tier one this season coming in. I'm sticking with All one right. season, that's it, yeah, yeah. Because... To be honest, but I didn't mean that in kind of detriment to the lower areas. I think everybody should get the opportunity to be seen. Absolutely, everybody. absolutely. Uh, but I think in terms of what I was saying is if, if the league wanted to promote it and they wanted to be seen, I think it's kind of, you have to have that elite level, don't you, in terms yeah. of... Um, you know, attraction, and that's what everybody should strive to get up. But I still think everybody else in the lower tier should get some coverage of something, whether it's highlights or whether it's, you know, having another live and getting other cons. I do think they should. Yeah. Get, I mean, what, what's, what's kind of come from that? Is it from you or... Yeah, no, that came from me. I said it to the lads the other day, because, like, look, I'm doing my best to try and recruit more comms, and that's why I'm getting people to join me in, and, you know, if they're not going to race on a Sunday, I'd love if Sky wasn't racing, he'd be an amazing comms in a different... Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, there was another guy that joined me the week before in Amigos, and if he's not racing on Sunday, I'd love for him to do one of the splits. So mm-hmm. the main thing is, well, I'm, I'm more than happy to get anyone in who's interested in broadcasting. I'll fully teach them how to do everything. I will have no problem spending like 24 hours 38 hours whatever it takes to show them how to do ever and do what we do and obviously they might do it better than me as well which is great but it's trying to get people to do the comms into it i'm more than happy to put the time in but i do feel we need three commentators i do think they deserve it i think but, you need the championships need that narrative don't they because they do. you can't have a tier one and a tier two tier three because there's no. three races in between that takes back on again and if you've got a viewer who actually is interested in the league you're not going to see kind of what's happened all right of oh, course Tony's in the lead how's he in the lead now he's four four mm. weeks ago what's actually happened unless you've got kind of like said a narrative to that yeah. so if you could get three commentators that'd be brilliant because you can see right this is all the championship for the arms for arms yeah. or whatever. And you can watch all the races and see how it happened and how absolutely what kind of points they've got so if you don't have that like you say it, it doesn't make sense to have one with one race and one with the next does it no well for me it was for myself that I felt that because I don't want to be commentating. Say I do the first race with yourself. Say you, you was the first race of the season. And great race. Then I move into the second race. I have not watched any of the race the week before. I know nothing about it. But all I know is the standings. Then I go into the third race, which is another league where I've missed the first two races. Don't have a clue what happened. And then I'm back then to the fourth uh, div. And it's after being two races again, not knowing what's happened. You know, it's... 
it's for because I'm, I'm archiving everyone every single stream i do including this is being put on youtube uh the youtube is slowly growing and i want to have an archive of every single stream i've done so there's playlists with the podcast with amigos with era for the endurance as well and keeping the endurance in its own separate thing so if it does endurance just say this time next year you want to look back at masano say of this year and think right that's the error i made last year and you're going to do a masano somewhere else and they'll kind of bring back stuff for you as well as drivers um so yeah i think it's the consistency um for the drivers and for the viewers and for myself as well because it's so hard to commentate broadcast and then not know what's going on from the few weeks before it's it, it wasn't viable um but i really do I'm, I'm working my ass off to try and get two more comes because the guys do deserve it and in right. fairness you were very aware of that and you wanted then unfortunately i don't have the time to do the comms over highlights but well, to be if, honest, my idea was actually to do a delayed start so you can come yeah. all boxes too much work for you isn't it? but yeah it's it's unfortunate with that but um sure look we'll see what happens and look it might be a thing where i might have to do two delayed starts if it is a case that it's a major thing um i'll just probably have no sleep on a sunday <laughs> <laughs> but um it might be worth doing but the polls have come in the porsche has won by the way 52 percent of oh, votes and in second place was the Bentley at 21% of the votes. Third place was the NSX. Pick, yeah, that was gonna yeah, it's a weird way. It was the two <laughs> that I picked. Then it was the NSX, Ferrari, and then the Aston. But the Bentley wouldn't be a bad show. It's second place. The Porsche, I'd love to see it in the Porsche. Because it'd be a massive challenge for you. But the only thing is, because it's such a fast season as well, probably the Bentley or NSX, I'd say. But we'll see. Um and in regards then amigos, how do you find the race in there? Because it's unlike any other league because the weather the weather is completely extreme as we witnessed yesterday, going from wet to dry to wet to dry again. Um how do how do you find those races? It's something that you enjoy or do you enjoy a more consistent weather? Because it is it's a it's a mixed conditions league to really improve drivers. Yeah, I mean it is very difficult. I mean, I'm not really. It's, this sounds really not bad, but don't want to disrespect amigos and Chris and stuff. But I don't take that as serious at the minute because I see it as, as a great league in terms of having the crack, the banter, trying new cars out of the M6, yeah, driving new standards, and, and still being competitive and enjoying the race and, and enjoying the league, which is it's a great fun league. It, it, like you say, you have to. It's not just getting drops as you can. It is very no. much. All right, what's he going to do? He's thinking about it. And I've not finished a lot of races because I'm not used to that at yeah. all. I've never been driven in a, in a league or a race where it's gone dry and wet or, or wet and dry. It's either been a wet race or it's either been a dry race or it might have been a wet drying out a little bit. I've never been in a race where it's been like that. So for me, it's been very, very difficult and it's great to learn all those skills. Yeah. But it's only taking it serious. Like I said, I've said before, I need to practice like mad for that track. So yeah. on a Sunday, I mean, that's my aim. My aim is Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. That that's all I think about. Is think about right. I need to be as quick as I can, and I need to be competitive and get a win on Sunday or whatever. So everything I do in midweek, I need to practice. I practice and practice and practice my ass off for that. So on a Monday, I don't think I can give that amount of practice at the minute because I can't. Because even if I practice, I have no idea what's going on because I have to practice a damp setup. So yeah. last night, for example, when I come on, I come on with like half an hour thinking, I'll try to get out and get off a clue. Is it going to be damp? Is it going to be wet? Is it going to be flooded? Is it going to be mild wet? Is it going to be baking hot? Is it going to be cold? Is it going to be dark? I have yeah. no idea. So in terms of practice, I've got to practice seven or eight different variants of that track for that car for me to be competitive. Mm. And I'm thinking, <laughs> I've not got a clue. It's impossible. So it's like, you don't, how do I drive? Because to me, to, to drive on the limit, I need to know. So if it's a rep race, for example, I need to get on the car and think about what's the limit, find the limit as quick as I can, and, and then I know, right, I can't go as quick as that corner anymore. I need to drop the gear, I need to break earlier. Right, I know that. And I'll push and push and push till I find it. But like you're saying, Amigos, you can't do that. <laughs> it's literally, all right, corner's coming up. What what's the what, what track is it then? I think I asked a question last night in chat. I said, how do you find out what the track uh, condition is? And I didn't know on the hood if you change it to the pit stop, it tells you. I didn't know that. Yeah. So I, what I, I had to do, I have a tablet. So on my, my rig, I've got, um, I can get a screen, obviously. You know like you put like your, your data, like a yeah. dashboard kind of thing. So I've got an old tablet that sometimes I use. I don't use anymore, but I used to use, and I've got a, a good dashboard app that mm. tells me everything, weather and stuff as well. So 
Mä oon pelkää, että aah, Goshin on last night, sattuista on Charge the Bomb. Se on aivan ihan ihan. Oh, great. So, someone told me that, but okay, so at least I'm flicking every two minutes while I'm driving to find out, is it wet, is it, is it dry, is it damp, is it, is it greasy? Because in my head, if I know it's a greasy track, I know how to drive the car. Yeah. If it's a damp track, I know how to drive the car. And it's so hard, you don't know what you're doing. Like I said, I can't, I can't fathom, I can't tell you how hard it is to think about to get on the limits or per light. I think it was James one last night, I can't remember. Was it James? No. No, it was uh, Weber. But yeah, so for him to drive fast all the time, that minute, it's ridiculous. It's he's ridiculous. he's done amazing the last two races though. Yeah. He he really has, I'm delighted for him. But see, that's what I love about me because as a commentator, but also as a driver, like when I was racing like competitive, it was more like Formula One and stuff like that. I love mixed conditions. That was when I loved it because it was just you had to have be ballsy, and I I love that. Like in fairness, I. I love commentating on that league because even us as commentators don't know on the next corner after a small bit of rain, are they going to go off? Like, yes, I was surprised at one of the corners where everyone just missed a break and I think it was down at the T1. There was like just one, like literally one lap that nearly, I'd say five or six cars in a row completely missed a break and which was crazy to see. And for me, I, I love seeing that. I understand for you if you're... Overtakes down the straight and I think it might was my breaking point and I just overshot it a few times because I just couldn't slow the car down to the other conditions. Yeah. It is... Like I say, it's good fun. It's great fun. Yeah, that's it. I love it. I think I think that what is good for drivers, even if they're your level or lower, it's a great way to learn and become a better driver because you learn to adapt. Because especially in the likes of a endurance race, I was uh, doing comms on an SSRI twenty four hour for charity one there a few weeks back. Skyler was racing it, and it was great fun seeing the adaptability. Some guys stayed out when it was raining. Because there was a good bit of rain in the first five hours, there was heavy rain about three times, like proper heavy rain, change conditions, people had to pit. But then there was a small sprinkle of rain, I think, for 15 minutes. Some people went in for the wets, but some people stayed on the dries. And just, I don't know how they got through it on the dries, but then they ended up pulling, like, I'd say, about an extra 20, 25 seconds on top of the, the guys in the wet. So I love seeing all that kind of variance. And I think Amigos is a great way for you to learn, for, for, learn the adaptability for when something like that happens, especially in an endurance. Yeah, hundred percent. It's like with the endurance events. I always say, like when I'm racing for Christmas stuff, before I come, is it gonna rain? Please don't rain. Yeah. Because literally, if you got a setup and you've got a dry setup, I really, really struggle with dry setups in the rain. So I need to learn that. That's something that I need to adapt and get better at. So okay. racing on the Eagles on a Monday will help learn that. Because, yeah. like I said, if it's a wet race coming up, I will change the car. I'll put my dry setup on, and literally, I know a couple of tweaks that fit me. So like yeah. I can't turn in. So literally, I'll turn the steering angle down or something like that uh, to make it easy to turn in. Because otherwise, I just can't turn the car. It just understeers like crazy for me in the wet, certain cars. Where I know other people can drive a dry setup very easy to put wet tires on. I just yeah. don't know how to do it. So like I said, in an endurance event, where obviously time is key for the pit stops, you need to learn how to drive the car in, in dry tires or whatever. So yeah. doing the meals on Monday will help me. Yeah, yeah. 100%. No. Um, what would your advice be to someone getting into that kind of racing? Because obviously you've done your own journey with it, but someone that's starting it that may get to watch this or you know may join the any of our communities, what would be like the the just the steps that you would say right? This is what you should do, and you know, kind of progress slowly with it. Um, like someone who's brand new, would you say? Yeah, someone that's only new into some racing that say joins like a ZRA, it's for everyone so it would have amateurs because it is an academy yeah just ask ask for help research you know um the guys in the, the coaching community now we're trying to do an ARO Christian's trying to do it myself Chris and the Sky you know we'll all help you out and we've got experience like I said I, I was a brand new newbie 18 months ago two years ago yeah. Sky has only been doing it six seven eight months I think he was telling us all right so we know you know how where it's been to and we mm. know kind of to develop and things like that so ask us we'll give you help all the time but I think it's just it's, it's learning and, and being adaptive to, to learn. Yeah. Um, find out, you know, what you like. But the key is enjoy it at the end of the day. You know, yeah. if you don't enjoy it, there's no point. Do you want, do you want, so some people might not like competitive racing. It might be just the, like, hot lapping or whatever or something like that might be their, their thing. But I think one of the biggest things is getting into a league. If you want to take it as a good hobby and you want fun, join a league, join the IRA, join a different league, get in the community, get involved with it. Have a crack with the guys. Most different people, like there's hundreds of guys in the area, if not more. There's always someone online all the time to chat to. 
you know, have a bit of banter, get on the track, do some practice. If that's what's wrong. Some guys just don't race. They don't, but they come on and have a practice. They have a laugh. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's look, that's part of it as well, isn't it? You know. Uh what I'm gonna do though for the crack, I'm gonna jump into a few of these questions because I haven't yeah. read any of these, so I'm really looking forward to this. Um I'm just gonna go into the channel here. So anyone who doesn't know, so if you're watching the stream, throwing a few questions into that chat there. And um we have it in our Discord, I put a QA chat where we get anyone in the community to <laughs> oh i should have took that picture lean put up and threw it in here <laughs> i didn't even see half of this stuff but we go through it all um right so we will start with t -t 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 paul venter so how do you determine if you are pushing hard enough how do you determine it <laughs> well if it's me you're pushing too hard and get chat minutes <laughs> yeah well no, that's a fair one uh, yeah no i'll put a dagger in my heart there <laughs> Uh, the problem with me is, in terms of pushing, is if I, if I know how to take a certain corner, say it's always the, the lead up to in the previous corner. Yeah. So say if I have a really bad exit or you take the previous corner poorly, I will still try and take the next corner as it should. So I might, I might be offline, like it's going too fast, and then you just get off track limits. And I just can't hold it in a little bit. Okay. I'm just, uh, I just put my foot down. So, so, yeah. so you probably PT, learn, learn patience. PTs <laughs> well, or spinning, yeah. <laughs> Match a gamble. Why do you consistently love taking drive through as well? These are going to start getting rough quickly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I said, I just, I, I'm all or nothing. I just go all yeah. out. I can't hold back because I always think, you know, someone's going to catch me or whatever. So, which I'm put to the floor, and that's my issue. Yeah. I, need to, I think Sky said a little bit sometimes, a couple of times to take it off, be more consistent. You know, they'll lose it where you get a DT. And, and especially in Misano, that was a massive, massive oh. tip. Poor Mizano, what happened there was, I think it was the fast right to the hairpin. I went wide, and then it gave me two track limits, not one. So, because I went wide, That's went weird. Wide, it gave me one. Then I went around the hairpin, it gave me another, even though I didn't say the track limit. And apparently, I read that that happens on that corner, Mizano. Never so, heard of that. Yeah, one track limit, one mistake, and it's giving me two track limits. Wow. So, now, this is a very, very good question now from Stacey Ellis. So you can only imagine how good it's going to be. Do you have a bad uh, back from carrying Chris Tedder every <laughs> endurance race? Well, I think I made more mistakes, to be fair. Or I've been in more instances. He had the one at Silverstone, didn't he? Because he did the um, drive-thru, weren't it? He got you three track limits before yeah, he even left the pitch, yeah. The drive-thru, I think it was, or something like that. Uh, Monza... I think me and Ryan Cooper had a bit of an incident, didn't we? We <laughs> tried that one. <laughs> yeah, that was my, my, my bad. But no, I don't think I carry him. He's just as quick and contrary. In fact, he, he, he pulled us back in Monza. He, uh, he's, he's done great in the last few races. So have you, though, because you come back from difficult situations just to give him the car up where you've got it as well. And even in the last race then, in Misano, to be able to carry that car with no brake pads, like what? Um, honestly, the last three or four laps was just ridiculous. The car was shot. I couldn't do anything. But I could see it on the stream. You had no braking, you had no turning because you could see you letting off before you're braking and everything. You were braking yeah. so much earlier because there was just nothing there. Um, so let me have a look. So, okay, so ERA Nathan is up, an absolute hero of a gentleman, by the way. Um, so, are you in this just for fun slash hobby or do you have any ambitions to become an elite sim racer in top races? Uh, no, we have to be realistic here. Yeah, I've got no chance of getting top top esports. You, you talk, I was talking before about that tenth of a second on each corner and things like that. To get to the elite of your sport, you are like I know that from the job and stuff, as obviously, and, and being in a sports background, the elite are the elite, and they are just literally it's ridiculous how good they are and how consistent they are. I might be able to do one lap, maybe. I'm about one to two seconds off esports level I would say at the minute certain really tracks, yeah certain tracks I make I mean uh, that's talking about the hot laps or what they see on YouTube which you mm. look at that like Mazzano I think it's the one but that's just them sweating in a race though they never they never do those yeah, times even so, quality even so they still I'm, I'm not that level I'm not near that level and, they, and don't forget they're, they're full time aren't they are from streaming True. every day don't they and, and put the time and effort in I think it's analysing now to see how fast well, that's what I need to do now is look at right what I need to do, and that's why I mentioned the tent on each corner. And if I can yeah. maybe fill it, but don't get me wrong, if I'm quick enough, I'll, I'll enter stuff 100%. But I've, I've not got no ambition, yeah. Uh, and I don't think 
I'm not. I'm always been quite good. I've always been better than average at most sports. But just that little more. That's why my dad calls me Jack of all trades, master and all. <laughs> I know you're a master of getting fast in this. Uh, um, now, Christian Fengler has a few nice questions for you, by the way. So I'm going to jump into them ones really quick. So, nice haircut. Where did you get it? <laughs> Circus Barbers, this one. No, no, no. I, just, I think Liam's put about it. Don't diss me about that. I got a source touch to that. George Clooney. <laughs> I'm great at 17. I am actually. If I let my hair go, I am fully great at my age. It's ridiculous. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. fuck it. I got great about 17. What was the way to it? I have no idea. I don't know, but look, I lost my hair from seeing Liam, so, you know, it happens as all, man. At least you have the hair. Um, so he says, what does your sim, so this is the question as well, what does your sim racing routine look like during a week? So Yeah, so literally, uh, I've said before, wife will go to bed early, I'll jump on and I'll kind of see what's about, to see how I feel, but generally if I've got a race coming up, whichever's my next race, I'll decide to do some practice on. So the minute, for example, I've got no races at all back from the Sunday leagues and obviously the Monday and Amigo. So this last week, all I've been doing is Kalani practice. I've not touched uh, Angaro in yet. I need to do that okay. probably this week because I need to get a wet set up and stuff. But I'm waiting until I choose my car for that because I don't because if I'm doing a wet race, I want to watch car. I mean, I don't want to mess about with different cars. So um, currently, I've been just messing around with different cars, see how fast I can get. But yeah. generally, what I do is I put my quality set up on or oh, low fuel, and I just try and hammer and hammer and hammer how fast I can go. Once I get to my limit and know how fast I can go, then I'll think, right, I'll put some fuel in. There's mm. no point putting fuel in if you don't know how fast you can go. True. That's, the That's quite true. So, um, during the week, I'll see what's coming up, and I'll jump on, and I'll hammer and hammer and hammer that tri- track, and then look where I'm going slower and analyse it. So go on YouTube again, find out a lap from one of these aliens, analyse it, pause it at different points, find out you know, what they're doing. Yeah. I'll go on, try it. I get nowhere near it, like, but try it myself and just keep hammering it. And then, depends if people go online, I'll jump online with them and, and have a race, have a banter. Um, yeah. And then once I get to a point where I'm just dead and I can't focus anymore on that, I might jump into the Sims or have a mess about and stuff, put a VR on or whatever. But yeah, generally most nights, if I'm not racing, I'll be practicing and, and looking at what's coming up for yeah. the race next. Yeah. So, and actually just while you're touching that there so do you know when you kind of get tired of doing just practicing for the sims what's the kind of game that you go to just to chill see i used to be a football guy i used to be a fifa well pro evo was my game back in the day so early 90s so i made yeah uh international superstar soccer on the snare so then oh yeah that. <laughs> that's got started it. and then it was playstation pro evo I was a boss at that i was honestly i, mean, I was shit out of that all the way through uh, and I always were football games. Football games for years and years and years. I was like a little bit in branches, but always football games. Yeah. And then obviously Pro Evo after Pro Evo 6 went down there. I went to FIFA, played FIFA non-stop. And it was only literally, when was it? When I saw my PlayStation and mm. I started going, I don't touch any other game now. I am just living sim racing. That's it. Wow. That's crazy. I remember, I'm not glad you're touching it. I like football and I'll have a bash of that when I get bored, like yeah. an hour or so. Honestly, I don't play anything else now. Well, I love the way you said pro evil football was your first go-to football game because they were great before they went downhill. Yeah, they were way better than FIFA. <laughs> way yeah. better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good to hear that, though. Um, okay, so here's a nice question as well from uh, Christian. So as a fresh dad, how difficult is it to manage all expectations and life to fit your hobby in? Yeah, I think if, if I, I think that question, I thought, I thought it was Ryan Cooper, weren't it? Because he's a brand new dad, isn't he? But in terms of being a dad, yeah, it's... Uh, Again, it's, it's, it's easier for me because my kids go to bed. So yeah. my kids go to bed between 7, 8, 9 o'clock, let's say. So yeah. I've always got that evening to, to do it. And then the issue becomes when it's a weekend in it. But like I said, my family's quite um, good with that. Let me know I race on Sunday night or whatever and mm. jump on now and again. Now, I've got two kids. I've got my daughter's nine and my, daughter, my son's five. So when they want to be all right, they can play together or you can leave them on their own devices now and again. But... Yeah, I think it's, it's the evening. It, it doesn't really affect me as much. Mm. If that makes sense. Unless, because like, it's late at night and like I said, I race it. I think on a Sunday it's like half oh, seven, eight o'clock. Yeah. You're going to, because you've got school on Monday. Yeah. So it fits. It's fine. You, you can do it. It's not like you... I mean, it's difficult for the guys in America and South Africa though, how their time scales work. South Africa, they're ahead of us, yeah. 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 
Yeah, no, that, look, I think that's a very good point. I and mean, I think you're lucky that it's because they're at the age that they are that they go to bed at those times as well, where it doesn't really... That's that they get in the way, because kids never get in the way. It's just that you can fit it in. Yeah. You know, so I think that's... You're very lucky that way. Um, And obviously, the fact that your lady as well goes to bed early as well. I think the other thing you got is, like, my daughter dances and my son put that start and play football and stuff now. So it's kind of like... If I've got like the daughter's dance competitions and stuff, mm-hmm. so if we're away for the weekend, I'll go doing that, and it that that could impact it. But again, yeah. it's still, still it's, it's life, and you won't change that for the world for nothing, would you? you Not at all, it. yeah. Doing that, then yeah. doing anything. So if I miss a race, I miss a race. It's, it's one of those yeah. things, isn't it? Yeah, so that's exactly, I think that answers what Nathan as well. You'll never ever do that because your family will come first, which is yeah. the right way as well. Um, I'm going to go on to the next one. So, all right. So this came in from Liam, um, and there's a lovely picture to follow this for the question. <laughs> He's like, are you that fan that you have uh, to have multiple oars on your Christmas tree? <laughs> I, t- I told him this in the chat, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Uncle, Uncle Ronnie. No, I'm, I'm winding him up. I'm winding him up. <laughs> no, so it's my missus who decorates the tree, does all that. She wanted a new tree a few years ago. So uh, obviously I'm Ryan R, uh, my daughter's Raya. Ah, uh, and then there's an S and there's a J for my wife and my, my little lad as well. So it's just that picture. It's the R and R in it. So there's an R R S J. It worked out very well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll let, let Liam stew for a few days now. <laughs> oh, here's a big one from Liam. If you had to, to choose between sim racing and tea, which would you never touch again? I don't drink tea, so that coffee I drink. Ah, oh, good man. Well, what about coffee? We'll it's change our coffee. Just to be honest, I'll tell you this: I've never, t- I've never touched a coffee thirty years. Really? Really? Never drank coffee in my life ever, and now I'm addicted. Oh yeah, I can't live without. I was just like, how do you do it? Like, <laughs> so literally, my wife, she coffee mad. Right? Honestly, she'll drink six cups of coffee a day. Mm. Right, and I just never done it. Never, never been interested in it. There's only one place I work at now. The lads are like, oh, "Need street coffee, need street coffee." I'm like, I don't do it. Hmm. And then you got me a black coffee. I'm like, oh, that's disgusting. I'm drinking that. But I then I think I went out with the missus once, and she likes a coffee. So go on, we'll go to a Costa. Whatever. Normally I get like a, I don't know, hot chocolate or something. Yeah. I tried a mock once. I quite liked it. It was all right. It's a bit of shock coffee. Yeah. And all of a sudden from there, I started drinking coffee, and it went through the roof. We yeah. had that kitchen. We had a new kitchen done about oh, what year? About seven years ago. At the time, I said, oh, let's have a building coffee machine. I said, what? You brought a building coffee machine. I said, you drink coffee now and again. You get all this fancy coffee machine. It stores it. I wouldn't want it. It's got space. So we never did it. And then literally, two or three years later, I'm drinking coffee. I said, oh, why do you think I got a coffee machine? But, <laughs> Look at that. Why didn't you do that? <laughs> so like I say, I can't do anything half I have to go full in. So literally, when I started liking coffee, I started researching coffee. So I started researching coffee beans. What are the best coffee beans? Mm. Get a coffee machine. So I bought a brand new coffee machine and I found out everybody in this community is going on coffee machines. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, but answer the question, I don't know. It's, if it was coffee or some medicine, I, think I could probably give up coffee, I reckon. I don't know, maybe. You'll see. <laughs> could be a bit of a one week one. And uh, just so you know, uh, Liam didn't believe this story. As well, you just wrote up a likely story. I think that was more about the oars on the tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, we'll jump on to the next one. Okay, is it a roll, bap, or barm? Neither. Really? Neither. What is it then? It's a muffin. What is this on about? I just... <laughs> I'm lost. It's an arm thing, isn't it? So I get like, roll, bap, or barm, and that's a muffin. It's a muffin. 100% it's a muffin. Nothing else. Okay. I don't know what you're talking about here. I'm yeah, so it's, confused. It's, it means bread. It's like a bread butter. You know, like a, like a, I call it muffin. It's a muffin. Do you call it a muffin? A muffin, yeah. It's a, it's a chip muffin or a chip or sausage muffin. What? That's what yeah, yeah. Whereas if you go to Bolton, I let Vickers, if he's in charge, he'll be a barn man in. Oh, really? Be a chip man, yeah, because that Wigan, Bolton, all that way, that'd be like barn Lancashire. Barn. It's that not like a chip butter, you know? Like, so that'll be like a roll. Yeah, was well, it not just a chip butty? Yeah, chip butty, yeah, but chip muffin. I've never, I honestly never <laughs> heard that until now, ever. <laughs> yeah, muffin. Right, that was an interesting question. Because <laughs> I actually never knew that. Um, why do you flip, or what's that? Who do you flip off when you pass them on track? What, you, what, what does he mean by flip off? 
Jag tänkte undra. Ja, ja. 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 Sometimes, I mean, you should never let everybody pass automatically. But sometimes, mm-hmm. if I made a mistake and I'm at the back and I'm quicker than the guy in front, I'm not. Re- you're not racing with me. Just let me pass. Don't, don't, don't fight me because it's going to cause more fight issues. Yeah. But maybe then I might give them a thing. But I won't, I won't complain because yeah. it's racing every day. You want to race, but sometimes I think just don't bother. Just let me through. I'm going to get through eventually. Or they might make a mistake and I might want to dive on to get annoyed and yeah. take you out, or whatever. So yeah, that's that. that yeah. Might be the only thing. I love the fact that people do get pissed off with racing because it's racing. Like, you look at people were giving out with Vettel when he lost the temper at Lewis. Yeah, it was probably a little bit overboard. Remember when he drove into the side of him and lifted the yeah, car yeah. up and that? But that's, like, you look back in the 70s, they did run way worse and they boxed the heads off each other to the side of the tracks. And they were crying over masks. Oh, it's a Schumacher who stormed down the pit lane once and converted. That was Schumacher and David Coulthard and Spa yeah. when he rear-ended him, yeah. yeah. And even with the likes of Max with um, Spa and Ocon, like, a lot of people... Like, that's just part of race, and it's the same with esports. You will be pissed off a few minutes. Yeah. The only thing is, though, is when you have an accident, don't be bringing it into the Discord and bitching and moan and just go away yeah. for a few minutes. Yeah, like. I've got, I got, I got a short temper, like not slight like, 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 aggression, but like, I get like someone hits, I get, oh, you see me, like kind of thing. And it's like I've learned different ways. So sometimes I might give it in, in if I'm in chat now, I, I have pushed it off and now. So if I'm giving it Jeff and Jeff and you want to hear me, or now and again, I might lose that. Yeah, I did on, so they do that, but. I've learned from don't say anything, don't put anything in Discord until you've watched it back. Yeah, absolutely. Someone, I, I've learned the hard way, so someone, like say, you watch the replay, you've either made a slight mistake, you've not meant to, yeah. it's, it's a mistake. Or you might have looked and think, actually, I'm a fault here, I've come across him, or I've not done something, I've done some of that, I didn't think I did. Yeah. So yeah. never, ever, ever give it the bigger until. No, absolutely not. Because when I, I always look at it, when any time I've had an incident, I'd always look at the camera replay, you know, from the helicopter. Because yeah, you, you get to see their line and your line and see, right, was yeah. I too fast or did they make some move? I'm board with them because, like, you've got your blinkers on. Because obviously, on, I only raise in a 32 inch, so I don't, I've not got the triple. So, yeah. if I'm got my blinkers on like this, I can't see here. Yeah. So, I might not, I might turn in or whatever. And then when I look from their point of view, when they've got the blinkers on, I see the same. And if I think, do you know what, they just been driving, just, it's just unlucky. It might be at fault, but it's not meant it. And you've yeah. got to look at from that point of view now and again. Yeah. No, I actually agree with that. That's uh, a good point on that one as well. Um, now, looking here, like, there's loads of bullshit talking in this, so <laughs> yeah. I'll find out where the next one is. No, it's all that's what she said. So, Matty Gamble, and this is the question of the oh. of the week, because we're going on about this now the last few streams with Skyler, and he did buy crisps, but... What is the best crisp sandwich? I was say, what's the best crisp for a crisp sandwich in your opinion? I'm a salt and vinegar guy. Salt and vinegar. That's classic, man. Yeah. Salt and vinegar. But what salt kind of salt and vinegar crisps though? Because there's different brands. See, and... it depends what you're after, don't you? So I got like like a tangy disco flavour sometimes. When you get all that salt salt at the bottom of the packet, of disco you can't be that. Yeah. That's good. Or I mean, you got your plain walkers and your crisp, but. McCoy's could be good, but high saturated fat, so I don't really touch them often. Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, a Pringle one now and again, but yeah, a good, a good disco one's good because you get all that salt, you miss all the salt on the crisp. I never knew discos were still being made. I remember them as a kid. I haven't yeah. seen them in years. I don't know. That's great. It must be uh, probably an English brand, are they? Yeah, I'm not sure, to be honest. Yeah, out of class, though. It's a chip stick, but it's quite good as well. Some of the chip sticks. Not bad, not bad. I like your I like your opinions and everyone got their opinion. Christian said currywurst. I don't know what currywurst is. Do you know what that is? Is that a German Austrian sausage or whatever? Is that is that is I don't know. Christian, if you're still here, will you let us know? <laughs> um let me see what else is put in there. Okay, so Stacey Ellis is wrote in, Are you a God fearing Christian man like myself? Are you Christian? I think is it. He spelled it as Christian. The name. I don't know if it's Christian. The the religion. I'm not sure. Um, I'm Christian, if that makes sense. But oh. I'm not religious at all. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying that if he was born Christian, but 
<laughs> no, I have no interest. <laughs> um, stay said as well. I hope you, um, I've got Adam. I've gone very easy. I hope you return the the favor. Uh, I'm sure you will. At Stacey's one, I'm gonna just have to stay from and the intro is just gonna be warning. There is going to be absolutely obliterating shy talk. Um back though to yourself. So look, we've gone through kind of the same race and stuff. So I did ask you what you do for a living, and I'd I'd love to ask you about that now, but how did you get into it? Because um everyone comes from a different walk of life, but I think what you're doing is quite an interesting um career. And how did you get into it? Now obviously, because of what it's about as well. What kind of, well, I'll just say, what kind of sport did you do to get you kind of into what and then to lecture about and stuff like that? If you want to go on about it, yeah. So obviously, I'm a sports teacher slash lecturer. I lecture at colleges and like university. Um, so um, yeah, got in base. I've always been sporty. Always, always been sporty. I'm very competitive by nature. Nature, personalities like that. So um, growing up as a kid, just literally played every sport. My dad was sporty. My dad played football to a decent level. Uh, my granddad, had, all my family's been sporting. My dad was a sports tutor, so I kind of followed him in oh, footsteps, right. if that makes sense. So, literally, uh, all through school, I played football, rugby, cricket, cross country, every sport, you know, every, it's almost like playing sport, I was there. And I was always just natural sportsman. Hmm. So, uh, I went through school, went through high school, played for every team in the high, in, played for badminton against other colleges, played for college uh, football team, athletics team, all this running. Uh, just 200 metres and stuff like that. So every sport at school I played. Uh, you know what, so that's, that was the only thing I liked. I liked sport. So yeah. to college, did obviously A-levels or whatever in sport, did, did my um, qualification. Went to uni, did a sports science coaching degree, finished that. And then at the end of that, my dad was like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm not going to not really play. So I just said, I'll just do what you do. That's what I said. So more mm. sport, I'll just do what you do. So did my teaching qual. Uh, worked in local colleges, uh, and I'll work at a college, uh, obviously in Manchester way. Nice. Uh, and kind of all levels from A level to degree. So, yeah, just going through that way, um, pretty much. <laughs> uh, can you delve into so when you lecture about, like, what exactly do you go about so the nutrition science, side of it? Science is my kind of main area. Okay. Uh, my kind of specialism is like sports performance analysis. Okay. So I've got a master's degree in sports performance analysis. Hence why I analyse everything. So kind of like uh, analysing sports performance, um, of data and all that type of stuff, biomechanical stuff, movement, just, just all everything around sporting disciplines. Uh, I've worked with, we have our academy set up, like football, academy, rugby academies. Uh, I've worked with the local professional teams and, and semi-professional teams, helping them out and do filming and analysis and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so like sports science, like physiology, anatomy, psychology, just like every discipline around that sports science field is kind of, okay. you know, what I teach you. And what, what you and then would you uh, be into the nutrition side as well? Because when you're talking about Chris, straight away, you're like saturated fats. <laughs> I, I know the nutrition. Yeah. My, my, my diet is terrible. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, I, I know the theor- theoretical stuff. I can teach it. And, uh, I know it all and things like that. Uh, but I won't say I'm one of them. Diet dietitians. It's mental actually because you think someone like me like fitness fanatic, but I'm not. Uh, I'm more the skill based element. So give me a sport, yeah. I'll be most majority of people. Like I said, I'm, I think I'm like better than average in most sports. Mm. Uh, but tell me to go and run a marathon tomorrow, but now nah, you're all right. <laughs> yeah. No, that's fair. And what would be your sports then when you're looking at, like, obviously football is going to be one of them. That's your English, that's just part of it. Um, but do you watch any other sports like so of rugby or American football or that? Because I was surprised with Paul Venter being in South Africa watching yeah. the American stuff. Well, I do. What I, I like American football. I used to be, but I can't really. I won't go and watch. I watch the Super Bowl because I watch watch games now and again, and I know about it. You know, I know how to play. I watch American football and tactics and things like yeah. that. And I do teams, but I won't say I'm one of those who I sit and watch it every Sunday because it's just too long in my opinion. Sometimes I can't sit there and watch a full game. Yeah. But, Three hours. I watch yeah. the Super Bowl. I watch watch bits, and if it's on telly, I'll browse and I like it. Um, but in terms of my sport, yeah, football was my main sport. You know, um, I grew up playing it. Um, I spent hours, like I said, playing pro football. Not only that, championship manager back in the day. I spent. Oh, what hours. a game! Talking literally, my life was coming home from school or college, jumping on a piece on an old PC. I mean, mum and dad are 
playing championship matches for hours, mm. absolute hours. Um, and obviously, you know about players and, and all that type of stuff. Uh, I follow rugby league, uh, follow Wigan. We used to have a season ticket at Wigan watching Wigan nice. Warriors all the time, rugby league. Uh, but like I said, because I'm sporty and I like sport, my dad used to take this everywhere. Nice. So, like, and I, because I like sport, like, I get into it. So like, if I'm watching on telly, like the Olympics come along, like Winter Olympics, I'll sit and watch the skiing, I'll sit and watch the curling, and I know all the players, I know all, all the skis and stuff like that. So people ask like, a sports quiz question. Yeah. I'll just put name down. I'll go, how do you know that? I just like sport. Yeah. But it's like those, if you take your kids bowling, I bet you just bowl the ball, don't you? Do you know what I mean? Just get the ball and bowl. Yeah. I don't. I try and spin it in like the pros do. It it's never works that, though. <laughs> I have because I watch a lot of sport. I have to follow and literally mimic what they do. It's mad. Yeah. Oh, oh man, it's what the hell are you doing? And it's like it's just just me, mate, just to, to do that. But like my dad, um, my mum and dad split when I was like ten or eleven, and every time I went to his house, he used to take me everywhere. And that's how I got into motor racing a little bit. So he took me to Alton Park watching the BTC in the early like late nineties. Uh, early 2000, right? that's all I used to watch. So, my dad had a Red Laguna at the time, car. Nice. Because he had a Laguna, right? We were watching BTC, and straight away we all supported the Laguna penalty. So, it was Alan Menu and Jason Plato. Yeah, I was supposed to say, you probably taught your Plato. Unbelievable. And I was like, this is class. And I don't know if you remember if I go into these races, you used to be able to walk on the track, go into the pits, and actually meet the drivers and walk around. It was amazing. I had, I had a poster on my bedroom wall. Uh, of cars, I think it was Tim Harvey at the time at Burger, nice. signed by him, hand signed on the racetrack. It was like mental. Yeah, that, but that was what it is. You, you would not get that now. Yeah. You wouldn't get that now. Yeah, I worked at a racing circuit for like 10 years. It was the same thing. You get to meet all the drivers to come in, but like that, I think that's something that I think racing fans now are very unlucky to don't get that because safety is yeah. now obviously the biggest issue. and. Yeah. You know, I think that's kind of ruined that a bit. But Stacey's put a message in the chat and I was going to ask you about it. So he says, what does Ryan think of Moneyball, the film and analytics in sport? Moneyball, yeah, great film. Uh, Barry Bean, uh, not Barry Bean, yeah, uh, class film. Yeah. So that, I, I teach that quite a lot. So in football, if you don't know, all football teams now literally um, use the Moneyball approach. So it's not like all the teams now, like you look at Southampton, Brighton, you look at uh, teams like that, they will pick their players on the bunny ball system through statistics. Mm-hmm. Everybody has databases now full of players yeah. which fit the philosophy and how they play. Uh, and yeah, what a great, that, that sounds a true story, the open is isn't it? And a great film. Yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, that's the way the sport's gone. It's so analytical like that now. Uh, sometimes you might see your team buy a player, but why the hell are they buying him? Well, this method with their madness within reason, especially the lower league teams. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, absolutely. And he, he actually mentioned something else was under that as well. He was said that he's been invited to the football manager game releases and normally puts 2,000 plus hours in and gives advice on forums as well. Nice. The thing, I don't play him anymore because it sounds really bad even though I'm analytical. I think they're too, too, too much now. So back <laughs> in the day when they had the old championship manager, like 93, 94, 95, 96, and even like, think it. Few boxes, buy your players, <laughs> say yeah. it's great. And then when you buy them later on, you just buy your players and do your tactics and stuff. I can't be bothered with all this, you know, conferences stuff and your training and this. Because it spends like if you do it properly, like as you know mm. I would if you're analytical and stuff, you'd probably spend a full day and yeah. all you've done is click continue once because you've done all your training programs, all your tactics, and it's things like it's just it's time consuming. Yeah. Sometimes personal I might download the demo now and have a quick quick play. Yeah. Just to say, and you, you, you don't get back in the day you used to do like two or three seasons in a week you don't get that anymore no definitely not you got the Formula 1 manager game and man it, yeah. it, it literally took two weeks of my life I'll never get back and I think I've yeah. done three races <laughs> well, I tried, uh, was it a motorsport game back in the day as well there was I to come back I think I tried that once and I, but again it was a bit wasn't the championship manager back in the day, so I know I, I loved them, but man, you will throw time into it. It's one of these kind of games that you just get swallowed into. So that's why I haven't, I have it there. I haven't like because this is a new PC. I haven't opened it once. I just I have the game sitting there for when yeah. I know I want to play because otherwise I'll end up losing too much time into it. It's just one of those games. Um, and just getting back to your 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 role in real life. So obviously you followed down in your father's footsteps. Was that a, a conscious decision that you made, or was it just something that you fell into? Yeah, just I, I fell into it a little bit, but like I said, I I, I do like my job. I talk about something I'm passionate about, something I love every day, just sport, and I can relate and I know a lot about sport, so mm. it kind of fits 
yeah, I kind of, I did fall into it a little bit. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I wanted to do like coaching, like football coaching, yeah. right? Really, that's like the right sport. But then I didn't kind of get into it. I didn't push myself. I kind of one of these, um, you know, kids back then who kind of coached. Yeah. Do what you have to do to splash your ECSEs. Do what you have to do to splash your A-levels. Get your degree. You know, you're too, too Desmond as you would be because you're not bothered. And then you realise, oh, crap, I need to do something about this now. And then you kind of fall into it and move it that way. It's not yeah. you get old. You realise actually you should put some more effort into it and yeah. kind of decide what it's gone now. So I, I see kids nowadays, I teach them, they've not got a clue what they want to do some of them. Yeah. And it's difficult because you think like, I'll probably the same actually. So you can't have a go on me, you can't say you can advise them and you can give them as much guidance as you can. Mm. It's like sports performance analysis, which is my area. A lot of people say to me, Oh, why don't you work in elite teams and, and do it? Because to start your career all over again, start from the bottom. People don't realise in sports it's a lot of volunteering, it's a lot of yeah. getting to know people and networking and building your way up. And yeah. I have the time to do that. I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm different age now, whatever. And you, you're old and you've got a family, you can't take the financial hit and stuff like that. Where yeah. I can advise the youngsters now, all right, I've got the contacts. You go, on, you go and do it, if that's what you want to do. I can tell them what to do now at 16, 17, 18. Yeah. And you can do it. Where, Back when I was there, like sports science was a discipline, but it wasn't as much as it is now in terms no. of the technology and the advancements. It's just gone through the roof now. That's something I was going to say to you because I'm a similar age to you. When you look at like kind of teenagers now that are in school and getting into the way to college and that, and you compare them to you when you were that age, it's two mm. different lives because they have an open world of internet phones and information. Back then, like we didn't really, it was kind of only at the start of that kind of a, a, a boom. Like, would you like to be a young person now, knowing what you know now? Do you know what I kind of way? Like, would you like? Would you rather? Would you envy people growing up now compared to when you grew up, or would you much prefer where you've grown up as in the time? I much prefer the time we were at in terms yeah. of the way we were brought up. Hundred percent. I think that kids nowadays are totally different. The way yeah. they're wired and stuff, and the way they act, and that's the different yeah. story. It's just totally different. But in terms of what I know now, yeah, I wish I, I know now what I do because my life would have been different in terms of. The way I went, yeah. Even like little things like you know investing and, and, and watching where you put your money and things like that. Where yeah. when you're young, you just blow it, blow it, it. Just do it and, and do whatever. Yeah. And now why did I buy a house at eighteen? Because <laughs> 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 I was uh, too busy going out getting drunk. But yeah, it's like yeah. If I knew what I knew now, I would mm. be better off. Don't get me wrong. I'm yeah. not saying not now, but in terms of, I quite like the era I grew up. Yeah. Personally. I yeah. think it was one of the best areas in the 90s. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. Sport yeah. was so good as well. Like, you look at the Premiership back then as well. You look at the British Touring yeah. Car. I don't think British Touring Car has peaked really from like the Super Touring of like, 97, 98, 99 into the 2000s a bit, and it's not as big as what it was, but those were the peak years of BTCC. Yeah. Then you had Formula One, which was blowing up at that stage as well, with Hackman and Schumacher Hill, everything like that as well. Yeah, it was a, a, a much simpler, but you could... Because no one had loads of phones about well, conversation. I I find honestly now because I'm like where I'm working now in uh, the company that I'm in. When you have people that are coming in that are in like their early twenties and stuff like that, the conversation is completely different. There is no yeah. proper conversation. It's it's like social media and just superficial kind of conversation. It's not like the conversation you'd have like just sitting up and talking as an adult, which I just I would class them now. Yeah, it's so different. I mean, if you look back at like, say the sport then, um, I remember like saying about the championship manager days, what I used to do literally, um, we had like in my house, like a loft and like ladders going in the loft and we had a yeah. PC up there. So I used to come home from school, go in the loft, watch championship manager, I had a telly up there. Yeah. Get on on a on a Saturday, F1 qualifying, sat there watching F1 qualifying, playing championship manager. Sunday, same again, playing championship manager, watching the race. And that's all about into like F1 and stuff. Hmm. And I like, like the Hill, the Cool Tar, the Schumacher's day, that was my, I loved it. Yeah. Um, but then I kind of lost interest in me from what you said after the BTC used to watch that religiously as well. Yeah. I still talk back most years with my dad. But then from what year would I say, maybe like, like say 2003, four, lost interest in BTC kind of thing. Well, like F1 wise, I lost interest in about 2009, 10. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, honestly. From the, what would I say, when the Vettel era, was it? Would I say? Yeah. 
saw the Red Bull dominance. I, I, dog, I, if there's a race was on, I'd watch it. But yeah. back, back in the Schumacher days, I'd watch every single race religiously. No. Sat there and, and you know watched everything. And it wasn't now, the last two years or so, where I've got massive into the sim racing that I actually follow up on properly. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't, just didn't bother with it. I think for me, it was more like, you know, they got the fastest car, they're going to win. And it was like, oh, it's a bit boring, there's no car there. But I, mean, I suppose it's always been like that, hasn't it? But like the hard, it has been, yeah. Like, don't interest me. Where's the noise? Where's the, the engines? Where's but in real life, they are noisy. Yeah. That's the thing. It's just the TV. Like they're not yeah. as like they're, they're, look. They're not going to go through you like the V10. That V10 area yeah. and the V12 area. They're never going to get that again. They were amazing eras. But it's, I don't know. I'm a different kind of Formula One fan to nearly everyone that I talk to. Because I look at the team development. I look at the team behind it. I look at you know how they're developing the car. Like Mercedes this year really impressed me by having a shy car to start of the year. Now obviously. Yeah. They are budget limited this year as well. So to see them then develop that car to make it a race winner with George Russell, even with the bad philosophy with the arrow that they were running. Um, I look at that, but I also, I'm a McLaren fan from day one and that'll never change. But I do like every other team and I like nearly all the drivers. Uh, obviously, I'm glad looking at Satifi is going because that was just a seat that was just there for whatever money, more than nothing else. So for you, when you were watching... Well, that's what the question I want to ask you then is this. So firstly, who's the team that you support? But secondly, so you had a massive gap when you did watch it to now you're back watching it. What have you seen the biggest progression? What's been the biggest positives then? Because obviously, if you had such a huge gap like that, you're after missing like the Vettel era and maybe the start of the Mercedes dominance and stuff like that as well. I, mean, I kept my eye on it and I knew what was happening. I watched now and again, but I wouldn't like to say, oh, Sunday I need to watch a race. Well, now I'll be like, I'll, I'll watch that race. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so I know what was going on so I keep an eye on sport mm-hmm. and, do for me, and I do watch it now and again so I knew what was going on but I just didn't like like I said I said I don't like the dominance but when you say about watching your team I don't really have a team now where, really? You know, like, yeah but I, it's like I'd like the British drivers to do well like, I, I like George Russell I love Lando Norris I think he's brilliant I love yeah. him to get like, where he's in a car and he can win so he's got so much talent and yeah. he's brilliant um, I do like those guys to win, but I think it's more their personalities and them as drivers rather yeah. than the car, if that makes sense. So I like McLaren to do that, don't get me wrong. Um, and obviously George Russell, I quite like him. But yeah. I actually, a bit like myself, I'm a United fan, right? I'm a United, but I've been a United fan since a kid, so I've missed yeah. all the... In the 80s, we were shite. So I'm not a glory in terms of that. I mean, I was a season to get all the United until she was 80 old, and my granddad was, so I've been born into that. In terms of like F1 and stuff, I was a Ferrari mad because mm-hmm. I loved Michael Schumacher. You might say that's weird for being an Englishman, but I loved Michael Schumacher. Well, he was he was, he was unreal. Obsessed. Yeah, obsessed with him. I thought it was just amazing. The drive and start. I just loved everything about him. Mm-hmm. So I had all Ferrari shirts, Ferrari flags. I went to so, so, so I was mad at F1 at that time. My mum bought me tickets to watch uh, the Grand Prix. So I went to Silverstone. First time I've ever been. Uh, I think it was about was it ninety nine? I must have been about forty or something. One around. of the best years of racing that was. 99. Big Michael Schumacher fan. What goes on in 99? The crash. The crash. <laughs> yeah. I'm sat, right, in Woodcote B. I don't know if you know Silverstone, the old yeah. Silverstone. Woodcote section, which is like the old now finishing straight. So, yeah. you know, it's um, is it Cops. Cops. Yeah. yeah. Cops can around there, right? So I'm sat in Woodcote stand, 14 year old, big Ferrari fly, Ferrari hat, sat there thinking Schumacher. Lap one, see the start, goes round, goes off, breaks his legs. All right, comes round, I'm going, Ferrari, that's oh, Schumacher. Well, what's happened to Eddie Irvine? I'm like, I'm thinking, it must be Eddie. Next me, you know, Schumacher in it, and it's like, got it. But I've got a great picture of this car coming into the pit, come board up. Really, yeah? <laughs> no yeah. way. Yeah, I've actually got photos in the photos and album somewhere when I was there, so I saw in 99 with it all, but... Uh, yeah, so I was a Ferrari fan, like Schumacher, loved all that. And when he come back, I wanted him to do well and things. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that, that was it, really. And then, like I said, the new stuff, um, I started watching it, but I don't know, I think I got, as I got older, a bit different. You start going out, don't you, mates yeah. and stuff, yeah. drinking and doing all the social stuff in your like, 20s and stuff. And it was like, I kind of lost interest a little bit. I lost mm. interest in, in motorsport and I, I didn't really kind of follow it at all, really. I had an yeah. eye on it, but I didn't really. Sit and watch a race. That's fair. Um, 
I'm going to ask you about another sport as well because you're into like the sports science stuff. Do you watch any UFC or boxing? Because that I'd say would be like for what you do being in sports science and that that must be a dream because if that's really pushing athletes to a higher level again because they do. Yeah, I watch boxing. Yeah, I watch boxing. I watch all the big fights and watch watch stuff. I'm a bit naffed off a little bit. So you just watch all the Sky Sports stuff with mm. uh, three months on every Friday night and Saturday night. But the like the design stuff it annoys me all the subscription services things. So I don't don't follow it now. Go like all the their fighters in the stables. Yeah, any big fights I watch boxing. Love boxing. So, yeah. Like, I used to like it, but yeah, I love it. The, the, the tactical, you almost respect how fit those guys are. You don't realise how fit they are. Yeah. If you ever try and do 30 seconds on the back, you are goose. They are yeah. absolutely fit as anything. In terms of UFC, when it got kind of get a bit, um, when they get big in this country, early 2000s, weren't it? It started building up. I don't yeah. Know what it was. Um, but I never really got into it. Never really? Kind of, no, I think it's more like the time zone stuff on beat. It's like early March. I was in, I know boxing. Is a little bit, but when you know it's a big fight, you know the fight is you, you, you might stay up. But I never really yeah. went to my, brother, my brother's massive into it, yeah. So, uh, but like, like anything, you could say like Gloria, and but I could say like the McGregor and all them was fighting or whatever. I, I might have had an interest, but yeah, I don't really follow UFC to be honest. I'm guessing you're a mass, mad UFC fan. I, I love UFC, I love boxing, I love yeah. any kind of martial yeah, arts. Yeah, I love boxing. Who'd be your favorite boxer, like of of all time? And I'm not just on about like championships because I have a favorite boxer. I don't think he would be classed as everyone's favorite boxer. I won't mention it until obviously you mention yours. But who'd be your favorite boxer of all time? And you could be looking back at the nineties as well because that was a great era for boxing as well. I don't know to be honest. Again, like in the nineties, it's like anything. I, I wasn't really following it like all the, all the boxers. It's kind of just the mainstream ones that it when you watch in like in the nineties used to go up. Mm. As a kid, go to my mate's house on his chip box. <laughs> as everybody Fair. else did, watching Lewis and Tyson and all that. Yeah. Um, I don't know to be honest. See, I never, never was a big fan of any heavyweights because it's just boring and slow. I think sometimes. Really? So, yeah. I was always more a fan of like the middle middleweight. Like so Chris Eubank, kind of. Yeah, but like maybe not back then. But when I followed it a bit more, like I used to like watching the and loved these fights because you used, used to just. Come in steam and being a Manchester lad as well. Yeah. In those, I slugged his fights because it was a proper scrap. Yeah. Uh, um, and something I like, uh, like near me as well, uh, Anthony Crawler. I saw Anthony yeah. Crawler just a couple of fights because he used to, he's, a, he's again Manchester. Nice. Uh, obviously, he's a man. So I've watched a few of his fights at, at the arena. Yeah. And Scott Quiggs from my town as well. So I was okay. just following a little bit and, and watching. But it's just a favourite fight. I don't know. I don't know really. I can't really. Great uh, Fury and uh, Usyk. Who do you I think? Love Fury, yeah. I mean, I never used to. I used to think of it for two, to be honest. But uh, <laughs> at the early days, but honestly, yeah, yeah it's frightening how quick he's on his feet. For such a big man. And but do you I, reckon between him and Usyk, though, for the the unified champion? Do you think you like think Usyk's a very underrated boxer? I think it's 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 more difficult than you think. But if you if you analyze the five and you look at it. Usage slip, he's got great movement, great feet, great hands. But if you always got the fastest feet of a big man you've got, and his reach is ridiculous. I don't know how long his reach is. Yeah. So yes. The way I see it, all Fury has to do, keep that that arm, that jab, so far in front of you use it, step back like he does every time he comes forward, and just pick him up. It'll be I think it'd be a boring fight. I think it'd be so boring, but I think Fury will just sit back on the jab, take him out, come back. Move away and, and not let him in, personally. Yeah, but well, that's Use what happened though. But like you look at what happened to him against uh, Wilder in the first fight, he kind of done his normal style. Then he changed camp, and then it has been that boring jab, 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 neck, neck, yeah. and then letting him wear himself down, and then just getting him. Yeah. And I think I think that's ideally what it's going to be. But see, so Usyk's a different breed as well. Usyk understands boxing, while Wilder yeah. doesn't have the boxing sense. Just, it's just got a bunch of them. Yeah. it's technically poor, isn't he? But yeah. it's just absolutely fun it's like um, unfortunately I'm going to say this as well Anthony Joshua I just yeah. I don't know what it is on because when I was watching him when he was going up and going through the ranks I thought he did have skill in him but it's then when he became from the semi-pro level up to that pro level he looked like he was out of out of he shouldn't yeah, have been there like. the guys at first I was like, oh my god this guy's ridiculous in terms yeah. of his power strength his angles I thought he was punching from all of them oh yeah like, when he got like a bit further on, he is 
you look at him, he's stiff and he's like a robot. He's just very much, yeah. he's got no head movement, he can't move his feet. He's very much back and forth there and there. Yeah. So if you've got a bit of skill about you, like I say, you can come from different angles and move your feet, you're going to beat him. Well, I think that's what Klitschko showed. Do you remember when he fought Klitschko? Because Klitschko retired, yeah. obviously. Now, he was at the end of his career. But he cracked Joshua in that yeah. fight. Do you know what I mean? So, like, it goes to show he was coming to a guy who really wasn't at the top level anymore, but still, obviously, he was a champion. Do you know? And that's, I think that started to show the cracks with him, but that was an amazing fight, though, regardless, just for the... That was one of the best fights in the 2000s, or the 2010s, no, is whatever they call it. It's like those styles, mate, it's fights, and it does, because sometimes you get this fight. Like, I, I still think you usually can be a poor fight. It'd be a great oh, yeah. spectacle, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But two very good tactical boxers with great skill. He's not going to let it go. No. No one's going to let it go there. It's going to be a chess match. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to see uh, Wilder and Joshua fight because I think Joshua is technically slightly better than uh, Wilder as a fighter, but Wilder, I think, will clean him up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He'll murder him. <laughs> It'll be yeah. a good fight. Um, um, let me see what else then because there was a few other things I was going to ask you as well and now my mind's just gone blank I should be writing down notes but I never do I just I just go off then in tangents um, oh that's it There's, you could talk about sports all day and every different kind but what I'm going to do I'm going to go back to the esports kind of stuff because I'm going to be conscious of time for you as well to kind of not be keeping you all night as well so going back to the, the esports what is your ambitions for this season but also this year because obviously you're racing in two leagues and then with all the endurance stuff that's coming up and there's a lot of it coming up this year including the 24 hour race as well what's your ambitions are you looking to try and be a champion again this year at some stage obviously you, you do understand the competition is going to be massive uh the ambition is always to win. Anything I do, you have to strive to win. Yeah. But I'm realistic. The competition is just done through the roof. Mm. But, like me and Chris were talking the other day, every year I'm getting quicker. Yeah. So if I look back now, for example, a track, um, even six months ago, eight months ago, every time I practice on that track now, I get quicker. Yeah. So. I'm not at that peak yet, you know what I mean? I think I'm nearly there. I think I'm nearly on the peak. Don't get me wrong, I don't think there's much movement. So, the competition is ridiculous. Would I like to win? 100%. Do I look, am I going to try and win? Yes. Realistically, like you said, Stride, I didn't realise he was signed. I mean, he's ridiculously quick. Ridiculously quick. Yeah. So, I'm going to have to get my ass off practice, try and get quicker and quicker and get the consistency with it as well. Um, so, See what happens, but I think if you finish in the top five, you've done well this season. Really well. Absolutely, that would be nearly like a race win because the, the level has. I'm interested to see, though, there was another lad that raced in the Misano race. Kieran Anderson, I think it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm hoping if he's signing up as well, I'd love to get him in because he is well, I think so. fast. His, his dad in it was um, signed up. I think it's obviously the South African now. Guys, yes. You know? I think... Um, I raced his dad because I think we did a pre-race, didn't we? Yeah. Um, and his dad was really quick, really he quick. He is. Right for a while. And then he was saying, obviously, it's a son. It's an e- that's an e-sports team, right? I'm sure it is. Yeah. Is it something? It's so either him or his friend is, yeah. So they're competing all over. So they're, they're, they're rapid. Yeah. Oh, it was a joy watching him in that force then. No one could keep, like, to pull on straight arm 11 or 12 seconds of Ozzy pulled on him. But I don't think that's their car either, so I don't even know what car they drive. So imagine if individual comp now and they choose to have their strong set, they're going to be even quicker. Yeah, that's cr- but that was crazy for me to see. That I was like, how is this lad in this race? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, suppose if you see the levels, like you said about the esports stuff. So if you drive like I've tried um, LFM now and again. I don't try yeah. a lot. I've not done many races, but I've, I've tried it a little bit. Yeah. And when you get in the top splits and you see the time, there's that many people who are absolutely rapid. Yeah. I mean. Us. So there is levels, and you've got to know what level you're at. And if all these guys come into this league, don't get me wrong, it's like I might have been a big fish in a small pond in, in the arc and, and the, yeah. um, you know, what's called it, what we're now the ERA. But if you attract and you get bigger, you're going to attract the faster guys. And if you get the faster guys, you're going to have to open your level. Yeah. Because they're just going to go for your loop. That's what they're doing. I think that's positive doing. for you, though. Yeah, 100% makes you better. I always did that when yeah. I first started on the PlayStation I mentioned before. The guys were rapid. It was absolutely ridiculous. So I was thinking, oh my God, I need to up my game. And that's where you get better. Yeah. 
it's, otherwise you don't. So if you stay at that level now, if we stayed the same races as six months ago, am I going to practice? Oh, I still practice, but am I going to get quicker? I don't know. Because no. it's not plus. The biggest thing about time trial thing, where it was like Skyler Force at the time, then Chris Force at the time, it's like, oh my God, how have they got that? I'm nowhere near it. <laughs> I, right, I need to get it. And I just literally did all the things I talked about. Hit a time, some other back, post it. Mm. And they're like, oh my God, I need to beat that. And that's what does it. So you need these fast guys. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I've always been a firm believer of even if I wouldn't say just say if I was racing I was probably into like amateur or silver I'd rather be in pro-ams to be at the very back and learn to get faster than be yeah. fast in a, when it's just you're not learning you'd rather be somewhere where you're always going to continuously learn and continuously be pushed so I'd agree with that that um, I think it's a great addition now that we are getting the faster drivers in because now we're going to see you evolve Chris Tedder evolve Matthew Gamble of all. I think Matthew Gamble is a little silent uh, killer as well. That guy is getting very, very fast. I'm very impressed with him, in fairness. I said Adam Locke is just... Oh, man. Yeah. 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 It's, I was dominant with VR, and I'm still like, out of it, so I bought a Quest 2 with it, uh, but I don't think I've got the, the horsepower on my PC to run it absolutely full with a full grid. Because I know people are racing VR a lot, especially in the Tuesday League, and they swear by it. Not just really? the merge. Because they say once you get past the immersion and get used to it, mm. you get faster. I suppose you've seen every detail and where your head is, that's what you're looking like. I suppose I, it would it. make sense. So, yeah. You can see it and you can turn it. Yeah. Sky mentioned about looking through the corner. Yeah. I need to try it, but if you look at a, 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 a VR, you're looking into the corner because it's there. So I have tried it and I can get on pace what I race now, but the yeah. issue is it's the. I struggle in VR in terms of my surroundings in racecraft yeah. because I'm so used to, for example, having a back button on my, on my um, wheel that I can look behind me. Yeah. I keep using that to see where the car is behind me. That it's not really realistic, is it? But it works, you know, and you have the radar and stuff. But in VR, you've got to use your mirrors, you've got to turn your head, and it's just hard, and I can't physically race using it. That's you know, crazy. I've got the time to actually learn it. Maybe down the line I need to look into it. I think but, it makes sense if you're driving some of the cars that have woeful kind of like black, like blank spots or what's it called? Blind spots. Because like, yeah, you can yeah. kind of probably look around that a bit more as well. So I think the Lambo is really bad with it. I can't drive the Lambo. The Lambo yeah. on the hour when I first started, I struggled because even my view now, especially when I used to do the PlayStation days, because back in the PlayStation PS4 days, you couldn't mm. change the view. So even like the field view, that's one thing that uh, took me a while to get used to. So okay. the field view is 55, on, it used to be on PlayStation 4. The 55 field of view, and then you used to have the big, that was the dashboard, the, mm. the camera views, and you couldn't change it. You change the camera, you couldn't change anything. So I learned how to drive like that. Yeah. So when I got to PC, I changed my field of view, which is one of the reasons why it's called as well. 32 or whatever I had at the start, 37, it's like, oh my God, it's so hard to drive. Yeah. And then you can change everything. So now I like, I like to look at, when I'm sat in the car, like I'm sat in the car with my wheel in relation. So I take like the wheel off in the game so I can't see the wheel because I don't like it. I like to see it in relation to what I drive. So when I say the dashboard, I can I move the height up a lot to fit in. But the Lambo was very like, it's, it was so big, that dashboard. Mm. I see much, I don't think. And if you move it up, you lose the dash, the, the dial of the actual uh, Oh, dashboard. yeah. Yeah. So that's like a screen or something. So if I'm driving like... You, Sometimes the M6 or like, uh, like the Lambo or other car sometimes. Remember, I use that tablet I was talking about and put it on as a dashboard so then I can still have my data and my Della. Yeah. Otherwise, I drive that car. And Liam was saying there as well that you do sit low on the Lambo. The driving position of the Lambo, if it's like that in real life, that must be a pig to drive. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, it's just, just it's, it's awful. Yeah. But like, you lose your height, just increase your height, you can get away with it, you just lose all the information. Yeah, and so if you're looking for championships, who is going to be? Do you feel like who are the drivers that you really feel you're going to be battling with on the track? From what you know, that's going to be kind of in your. It's, it's impossible to call now, like because yeah, I mentioned before these African guys are coming. I think if that then off stride and comes in. I'd expect to be in front of me. I, he'd be in front of me unless I pick up pace because he's really quick. No. But like I said, my pace. You got like Ted. You got Nick. Me and Mike Cooper, for some reason, always seem to be on the same pace. Yeah. And literally, like, battling, no matter what track we drive at, it's always me and him. Yeah. Like, there. 
Uh, I think Sky mentioned in his podcast that even though we're similar pace, we've not actually had a battle. I've not been in a race where the because he's had a shot off, I've shot off, and maybe it's just, but he'll be around there. Obviously, you've got like Vickers Gamble, Lock now, Blake, Blake's ridiculous, definitely. Yeah. So when he comes back in from the previous year, he's lightning. And he started putting time in the time trial. Yeah, I was like, oh my God. It's like, <laughs> please slow down. I don't want to be drafting and, and doing it all the time. So yeah, he's going to be rapid. I've yeah. missed a few hours. Chris Vickers is not slow. Paul Venter's not slow. No, he's definitely no, not. It's like, yeah, I'm, I have to say I'm going to battle with this person where a few few years ago, like, oh not years ago, say the start of the other seasons, I could probably pick two or three. Let's say that bit, yeah. Now there's 10, 11, 12. Yeah. That pro split from whatever we do, from whoever's pole to last, I don't know how many we're going to have in that split, whether it's 20, 30. I guarantee that you're all in within a second. There'll be one second in between that. I'm going to give it a second and a half from first to last. Second, max, yeah. max, max. Yeah. yeah. I think it's going to be ridiculously close. Yeah, it's going to be who doesn't bin it, who can keep on the limit the longest without binning it, and pit stops as well. That's my Achilles heel as well, pit stops. I lose a hell of a lot of time in pits. I, so, I mean, Chris does his track guide, doesn't he? Yeah. But I always slow down a little bit before, and I never get, sometimes I never get the pit right. I'll go a little bit too far, a little bit too, and then it goes up and then comes back down and goes up again. And that's like two or three seconds. Yeah. So I that's going to be key this year. I think you've got to nail that pit stops every second, like you know, yeah. the day of breakfast for the cycling. Marginal gains, marginal gains is going. To be- but to make the difference, that's the difference of winning a race, you know, a hundred percent. And I, that, I think that proved in one of the races in Amigos. What race was it? No, it nearly worked out for me. I think it was James Franklin on um, on Gary Smith that he took less fuel. There was something anyway like that, but like he literally. Had two seconds less, but was enough to keep him ahead. But like barely, barely ahead. Like it was great. So seeing that kind of stuff, I think is going to be massively huge. But I know Chris Tedder is doing pit entrance videos and stuff like that as well now. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I, I think um I think he'll have a good few battles throughout the season. Um, I'm looking you forward to seeing. You know, get away with it unless they're like absolutely ridiculous. That's not like I say, like maybe a stride or something. Or one of the Porsches at Kalami. If that was yeah. Crap. Apart from that. Oh, you might get track the suit shit. You're not gonna get someone who's bombing up. No. It's gonna be close. Yeah, I think this, yeah, I think it's gonna be a probably a humble experience for a lot of guys who thought they were fast coming in, as well as guys that are already here because they're gonna be coming up against people on their pace or slightly better as well. So it's gonna be very, very good fun. Um I think we'll call it a uh, night because we're nearly two hours in for yourself, bro. <laughs> I'm always conscious of people now because we all have to do them late enough in the day as I well. <laughs> You know yourself, but uh, Ryan, I want to thank you so much for your time. Like you're an absolute legend in the discourse, and you're always very helpful to others. And it was a genuine pleasure speaking to you. I actually wish if it wasn't the fact of obviously keeping it with time limitations, I'd have to say talk to you for hours, especially about the the sports and boxing and stuff like that as well. Um, do you have any message for anyone? And actually, there's one more question I want to ask you as well. Who's your favorite person in the discord of ERA? Who's your who's your bestie? I say that can't make a Ah, uh, you have to pick one. You have to pick your favourite. Just for the laughs, because I just can't can't literally know what's coming. Whether he's going to quit the disc golf, he's going to hiss a bit, or he puts the bombs in, sticks the Ellis. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't know what bomb was coming when you see Stacey Ellis type, oh, and you're like, oh. He's going to quit about five times and come back and take his knees Although he's improved. He has improved, in fairness, with the whole giving out. I think he's learned to. Oh, He's a good man. Yeah, I know he's a legend. I think that's a good way. But yeah, look, um, do, do you have any socials that you want people to follow? Do you have any esports socials or anything like that? I don't, but I need to start doing that. I used to stream on my PS4, um, one straight from my oh, PS5, so I need to start doing it, but I don't have any. But once I start posting about it, I'll literally, no, not doing no socials. I'm boring. <laughs> You're definitely far from boring anyway, if anyone's <laughs> listening to this one. But uh, no, honestly, thank you so much for your time. Uh, it's been a genuine pleasure and uh, hopefully we get to do it again probably down the line throughout the year. Uh, it's been great pleasures. Thank you so much. So, excellent. So look, guys, thank you so much for uh, tuning in and whoever gets to watch this after as well. And of course, you're going to be on YouTube, Ryan, as well. So people in a year or two from now or 50 years from now, you know, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, my next stream is going to be on the exit video here. So um, guys, thank you so much and have a great evening.